2014. Six players remain, all guaranteed at least a million dollars. They are going to play for the title, the trophy, and the first prize of four million dollars. We are cards up all the way. Every single hand live as we play down to a champion. I am James Hartigan. Alongside me are Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And Griffin Benja. Hi, everyone. Griffin, are you excited for the final table of the second ever PSPC? Yeah, uh, incredibly excited. I mean, this is, you know, why we're here. It's finally happening. What's this? Ten days of coverage yeah. all, you know, accumulating into this this big moment. I mean, uh, it's it's incredible. What a what a ride so far. Uh, Griffin highlighting, Joe, that this is day 10 of 10. And it does kind of feel like it. I have to say the last two days have been particularly taxing. The bubble took its toll. And yesterday was a very dramatic and emotional day. Yeah, taxing, but we're relying on adrenaline to get us through. We had 46 eliminations yesterday. If you break that down mathematically to about the eight hours they played, that's more than four per hour. Uh, it's like no, never more than 10 or 15 minutes without an elimination. And of course, as we got deeper into the day, that meant money jumps every couple of eliminations or by the end of the day, every elimination. So that really has been getting us through, and I'm sure it's been getting the players through as well. Well, if you missed our day four coverage, let's recap what happened on the penultimate day of the PSPC. <laughs> 52 players returned for day four. 15 platinum pass winners still in contention for life-changing money. And as soon as the first card was dealt, the boss dealts came thick and fast. The action was relentless. We lost 20 players in 90 minutes. And the pace of eliminations continued at a rate we've never seen before. Oh! Eight, but it's a club. Let's go, Flushy! Flushy flushes. As the players settled on two tables, platinum pass winner Tom Parsons ran his queens into the aces of Alexander Shilko. Parsons hit the rail in 16th, taking home $165,000. Then Team Pro Sam Grafton fell just short of the final table. After an impressive run, he bowed out in 12th. Argentinian pro Nacho Barbero used his big stack to apply maximum pressure. Finally, seven became six. Philippe Pizzari knocking out Thomas Aichen. The Frenchman left us in seventh, taking home 800K. And that means the final table was set. All six players locking up a seven-figure score. Just want to throw a special congratulations out there to Thomas Aishen, who just missed out on the seven-figure scores, but had been in the middle of a bankroll challenge where he was trying to turn 10 euros into a million euros, oh. and that 800K <laughs> put him over the line. Fantastic stuff. Uh, obviously, a big difference, though, between what sixth place is going to pay and what the winner is going to get. Let's look at the payouts at this six-handed final table. Next player out a million, then 1.25 million for fifth, one and a half million for fourth, nearly $2 million for third. The runner up in the PSPC gets 2.5 million, but the winner gets more than $4 million. And of course, Joe, we have got a seven big blind stack at this final table. And I imagine, Griffin, that that is going to make it kind of tough for there to be much maneuvering for the other players. Yeah, I mean, you need to respect the realities of ICM. You you really need to wait for that, uh, you know, tomb to bust so you can ladder up. I mean, you don't want to end up reshoving ace-10 off for 20 big blinds against what you might perceive as a light open, get snapped by queens, and then you bust in sixth when tomb is going to blind out after a few rotations. So you got to be careful, and uh, everyone is going to have their eyes on the, on the German. Uh, we'll talk about the players in just a moment, but Joe, I should highlight, in the inaugural PSPC in 2019, we didn't see any kind of deal. They played for it all. Do you think that'll happen again today? You know, it's always really difficult to say. It, it's so much of it depends on the person, depends on the individual, what their financial situation is, what their backing situation is. I do think in situations like this, it is a lot of money. There are huge prize jumps, but sometimes there's like a little psychology that says, well, I've already lo locked up $2.5 million. Why do I have to make the deal? Let's just play for all of it. And of course, the chip disparity and who has all the chips will dictate that as well. Let's look at how the players stack up coming into play today. Highlighted already that one of our platinum pass winners has just seven big blinds. Nicholas Toom in the danger zone. Danger zone. Max Menzel with 20 bigs. Pedro Marques, 40 bigs. 
Then we've got the 50 big blind stacks near enough, Philippe Pizzari and Alexander Shilko. Chip leader Nacho Barbero has a 77 big blind stack. And we're kicking off a new level, by the way, 125, 250. Very rarely, Joe, we actually finish the day losing a player on the very last hand of a level. Yeah, just a little bit of kismet there. I'm not really sure what it means for the rest of the, uh, the day today, but uh, nice round things make us happy in general. Okay, we're going to talk about the final six now, and we're going to start with the first of our two platinum pass winners at the final table. Griffin, I love the story of Nick Latoum, a.k.a. Flushy. Here is a guy who got given a platinum pass for being a great member of the Twitch community, and I imagine today we're going to see a lot of that community on the rail. Yeah, I mean, part of what makes this t tournament so special in general is that, you know, it really does give you that David versus Goliath feeling and that's really what's going into this final table seven big blinds that's not a lot of sling and uh he's gonna have to get lucky to sort of get back into contention but that's the great thing about tournament poker as well is that sometimes you know it just takes one day to feel like the best and sometimes you can just be the luckiest i mean i love nick latoum i love his story he works in accounting he streams ten dollar mtts online although with a seven big blind stack he is kind of like the red shirt ensign on star trek right now <laughs> Everyone's expecting him not to make it back from the away party. I enjoyed watching him ladder up yesterday, and I hope the same thing happens today. And now the other Platinum Pass winner we have at the final table is Max Menzel, originally from Germany, now lives in Singapore. I think it's fair to say that Max is a pretty proficient player, but he does not play poker full time. One is Platinum Pass at the road to PSPC in Manila. And this obviously is going to be a life-changing result, a life-changing score for him, Griffin. Yeah, and uh, a great table presence, I have to say. He may, may not say he's a professional, but he sure looks like one on the table. So uh, definitely a dangerous player, but someone who really needs to, I mean, the 20 big blind stack, the next one has 41. So I don't think he can play a lot of hands. And we even see, saw yesterday making some big folds, folding the ace queen in the big blind to the shove, knowing so he knows when he has to get the money and it's not now. He called himself, he said, I don't want to sound arrogant, but I think I'm one of the best players in the field that no one knows yet. Yet, so I'm wondering if he is one of these players that's going to try to stand up to Nacho eventually. He is also eliciting more bad lookalike suggestions than any other player at the <laughs> final table. I'm sticking with young Martin Landau, by the way. Uh, you mentioned Nacho Barbero. Obviously, we know Nacho's story. He was known as back-to-back -back Nacho because he won back-to-back -back LAPT events. He's won an FPS event. He's had a lot of success on the live poker circuit. He has got the chip lead coming into play, Griffin, and he proved yesterday that he knows what to do with that chip lead. Yeah, I was pretty impressed by how much pressure Nacho was prepared to put on. Clearly has done a lot of final table work. He's been on a lot of them in his life. Uh, you know, we saw that open shove with the 10-8, some really ambitious sort of deviations, the 9-4 suited open under the gun. But I think that's exciting uh, going into today, today, having a chip leader that's really willing to wield it and we'll, might see fireworks. And I would say, Joe, that he's obviously the favorite coming in because of his experience, his accomplishments and his chip lead. It is a case of can anyone dethrone Nacho? Absolutely. And, you know, uh, experience, chip stack, we also we mentioned both of those things. Nacho... Uh, has a great story right now also. He's been going through some financial trouble the last couple of years. He came on uh, back onto the scene at the World Series super hard over the summer, and here he is potentially scoring for over $4 million. Let's just discuss the other players at the final table. Philippe Pizzari, uh, this is a Brazilian player who now lives in Miami, has lived there for the better part of a decade, and is a regular on the Florida circuit, but again, is not a full-time professional poker player. Pedro Marques, on the other hand, is a poker pro. I think it was EPT Barcelona 2018 where he first came onto our radar. Came on our radar then, and we spent plenty of time covering him at the PCA main event just last week. Yeah. $2.9 million in live earnings for Marques. And last but by no means least, Griffin, Alexander Shilko mm. from Belarus. He is relatively late to the party. We only really saw him at the PSPC yesterday when he moved to the feature table, he's already impressed. Yeah, frankly, he was the only one that I think was really standing up to uh, Nacho. I mean, you look at that table yesterday and this, the, the king-queen hand from the small blind, you know, being prepared to call, uh, finding three bets in on the turn when you're one of those middling stacks and, you know, the chip leader can put a lot of pressure on you. I think that is very telling uh, that he's willing to go to battle against Nacho on this final table and uh, we'll see what, what happens.
He is also responsible for my favorite quotes heard here in the Bahamas. He paid $7 for a chocolate bar. His reaction, you could get a decent meal for that in Belarus. <laughs> uh, a reminder before we get to the action at the final table, today is the last day of our mini PCA series. And that means we've got three low, in, low buy in tournaments running today. And there are EPT satellite tickets added to the prize pool of each tournament. I am super pumped. We've reached that moment where we're going to play down to a champion in the PSPC. Time to get the final table underway. And the good news is, it looks like most, if not all, the players have taken their seats on the main stage. And great to see already there is a rail building for the final table of what I keep saying, Griffin, is the ultimate poker tournament, a unique 25K event. Yeah, I mean, look at those lights pouring in. It's the poker gods watching. <laughs> I mean, they're pumped for this. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is, this is just so incredible, so special. Two Platinum Pass winners here on the final table. And it's just been such an amazing event over the last uh, 10 days. You know, it's, it's pretty amazing when you, when you talk to players. And, and let me put my player hat on for a second because yeah. I did play in this event. I did manage to cash. So I was talking to a lot of players, and everyone is just so happy. I mean, this is really an event not just uh, for, you know, the amateurs, the dreamers that found their way in through, you know, opening a chest on, on poker stars or the like like that, but also, you know, it's the maybe the best value high roller event ever, or at least one of them. And that's just making everyone here happy. Uh, it's just been such a special event and uh, it's been great to be a part of. And we will see the conclusion today. Every single hand of the final table. There's Shilko. Chug and tea. Okay, I'm gonna need that whistle. <laughs> oh, look at that, what a great shot from the camera. <laughs> Nicholas Toom, we just mentioned moments ago. And we said yesterday, it's all gravy now, right? You've locked up a million, you've come in with seven big blinds, no expectations, no pressure. If you can lad up, fantastic. If you can't, You've done so well. But this is what it's all about, right? I mean, you know, when you think you're never going to get a point of Rafa Nadal playing tennis, right? But with poker, you can get on that final table. It doesn't matter who you are. If you have a little luck and a couple of, uh, you know, nice moves. And, and here he is playing in some of the best players in the world up for four million dollars from streaming $10 tournaments. I mean, this is this is the dream. This is it. He's living it. Among the people on his rail are Mason Pye and GJ Reggie, who, of course, gave him that platinum pass. It was the Dare to Stream yeah. competition that they mm -hmm. ran last year. So Sebastian Huber was the winner of that competition, and he got the contract with PokerStars as a member of Team Online. But Flushy got the community prize. It was a kind of extra prize because of how much he'd supported all the people who took part in that competition and that prize was a platinum pass. Incredible. And of course he is one of two platinum pass winners to make the final six. The other being Max Menzel. The wickedly talented. And we've got purple chips at the table. Have we ever had purple chips in play before? I don't like think them. so. And a reminder of the stacks of the final six. And a reminder that we're kicking things off at the start of level 31. 125,000, 250,000 with a 250k big blind ante. No player has more than 50 big blinds other than Nacho Barbero. He does have a significant advantage right now. And we just have to hope that Nicholas Toom can find an opportunity to double up early because he can't last too many orbits, Griffin. Yeah, and, but not much to lose in a way. Free rolling, you made the million dollars. Now let's see uh, see if we can find a ladder or two and just, just get, get it in a couple times and get lucky. The extra, by the way, the sixth place money here, the extra on top of the million, we keep calling it a million, it's a million and 1,200. The 1,200 would be my biggest score ever. <laughs> the amount that we're just rounding down is bigger than my biggest score. Got to give yourself a little. Didn't you win a 10K package? You're, you're, you know, you're moving up. <laughs> Got my own free roll coming up. <laughs> so yes, 
four million up top, plus the trophy, which has been positioned at the front of the stage. And you will join Ramon Kalilas and the history books as a PSPC champion over the second time this event is run. Small patience. <laughs> Beautiful track. Hey, I love this tournament, Poker Stars. Are we on TV yet? <laughs> yes, si. Nacho, you are on TV. See, <laughs> si, Nacho. See. <laughs> si. Yeah, all of these players, I mean, quite frankly, a part of poker history now. I mean, I, I remember when I final tabled the World Series and main event, it felt like I was a part of something that was going to be remembered, and this is this is something like that. So to clarify, guys, chip denominations, the greens are now the <laughs> smallest chips in play, and they are worth 25K each. The whites, 100K. Those purple chips are worth 500K, half a million each. Hey, those greens are valuable. I had one of those, and it got me in the money. <laughs> Philippe Pizzari in his seat, ready to go. Rep in Brazil, a country that's had a lot of great results in the last few years. Nacho Barbero from Argentina. Chip leader coming into the day. A lot of people think Nacho is the favorite, of course, but you know, this is not your standard chip lead on a final table. There's a lot of people that can gain ground on him. Max Menzel, originally from Berlin, now living in Singapore, where he worked for a German logistics company. He's about to be singer rich. <laughs> Pedro Marques from Portugal. And I seem to remember him wearing that top. Oh, yeah during EPT Barcelona when he made the final table of that event in 2018. And there is the sixth finalist, Alexander Shilko, hovering around the 50 big blind mark. He was the player who eliminated Tom Parsons in 16th when Tom ran his queens into Shilko's aces. And of course, Flushy, Nicholas Toom is the short stack with seven bigs. Patched up. Curling Master on Twitch says, I took part in Dare to Stream, and I kid you not. Flushy sent me at least 20 messages during the competition asking if he could help me with emotes, modding, setting up, thinking of content. He's an amazing person, very deserving of that prize. Did you see the way he was laying out his time bank cards right there? Those are the That's like the physicality of someone that's just enjoying every second of this, just taking delight in. in being there. Yeah. Clock is running. Cards are in the air. The final table of the PSPC is underway. Alexander Shilko has folded under the gun. Pedro Marques has queen six. Passes. What's going to be fun about a six-handed final table, too, is that the Rangers are going to be wider than we're used to seeing, especially from early position. And Tomb right away with the ace-king. It's not a Tuma. It's ace-king. Huge opportunity here for Nicholas Toom. Huge opportunity. Oh, wow. There's a time bank card being played. Like I said, just enjoying the moment here, I think, a little bit. Yeah, but also might be just sort of a, you know, maybe I would do this with the hands I'm not sure about, and let's maybe see if I can get a call, like something from, like, ace eight off or something from the big or a, or a king jack. Didn't make the mistake this time. Used both hands to put almost all the chips in. Virtual all in from two. One has left himself 575,000 behind. And Nacho Barbero with ace four on the button. I think even with the dwell up there and how tight Toom was playing yesterday, yeah, ace four is going to be not something Nacho is going to call with. And it is a dead button. There's no small blind here. So Menzel in the big. And this is similar to the kind of hand that... You know, I was talking about obviously ace nine would be probably more likely to be calling. Do you want to call the ace three? What do we think about Tomb's shove range here at the cutoff? 
and it, it appears it thinks ace three is going to be good enough. And for seven big blinds, it usually is. But Tomb just happens to have it. So Menzel shoves on Tomb. Nicholas calls it off and is in a great position here to double up through the other Platinum Pass winner. I know for math's sake that ace three is going to be a call there for a lot of people. I just don't see Nicholas Tomb shoving the very first hand with a hand that ace three is doing great against. Yeah. And important to look at on the far left there, the size of Menzel's stack behind and then the pot over there. This will flip-flop Menzel and Tomb if the ace king can hold. And it's holding on the flop. Queen, deuce, deuce. Does bring some chop opportunities, of course. Yeah, ace king not losing, but has some ways to not profit a whole lot. Yeah, the wheels might turn on the turn. Oh, there hey. is the dagger. Oh. Menzel drawing dead on the turn. That is a flushy double up on the very first hand of the PSPC final table. I mean, when have we ever seen an entire rail in support of a person from hand one? Yeah, and I'm very curious to to talk to some of my you know, you fellow poker sport, players, like someone like Sam, about <laughs> that you. ace three spot. Because it feels like if it's nine, ten big blinds, you're never calling. What a double. So eight, what you're four, probably four. folding. And then what do you do at seven? Four. It's, Man, you know, you to have that flip-flop there. And now you're really in risk of not getting that ladder, which is, you know, worth almost $250,000. Uh, yeah. Flushy is back. He has 15 big blinds. Menzel now becomes the short stack at the table with 11 bigs. It's the other platinum pass winner. It's Max Menzel, who is now in the danger zone. Danger zone! You should have folded it right away. If you ask me about the folded it, it's okay. But it's okay. Hand two of the final table. Do you think like one in every like four or five danger zones I could try to sync up with you or, or is that like your what do you think? It's a discussion we should maybe have off air. <laughs> Pizarri with Ace King. He opens to five hundred and fifty thousand. A reminder that we are at the one twenty five two fifty blind level. And rounds to Alexander Shilko in the big blind. You call with eight three? Shilko with <laughs> oh <laughs> my God. eight deuce of diamonds as Menzel gets the call. needle from Barbero. <laughs> I'm choking. Easy call for you on the big one. He's choking. Work for me. Raise and take it for Pizarri. Well, I'm glad it doesn't look like every single hand at this final table is going to be as dramatic as the first, because I'm not sure my heart would be able to take it. I'm calling eight seven plus. <clears throat> it depends how I feel at my fold eight seven, and I'm pretty sure I call eight eight hundred percent. Nacho just giving his entire strategy to the table. Hey, what does it matter? Mitch says, Nacho's such a goober. I love it. Wait. That's what a goober is? He's got some goober tendencies, but you're the real goober. Don't worry, Griffin. Thank you. And now Menzel with, obviously, saying nothing to lose is a little... <laughs> Not true, but now that you're last in pla last last place, you can certainly find a shove here, knowing how wide Barbero is going to open, and that's effectively what Max Menzel is doing here, putting in all those whites and purples. So Griffin. Talk to me about the fact that we have two stacks right now, both 15 big blinds. Is it mm -hmm. the same dynamic as there being one stack with seven big blinds? And if not, who does it actually change for? Well, yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a very good question. I mean, when it comes to Max and Nicholas, now, I mean, obviously they're just, it's a fair fight. Um, you know, I think everyone, yeah, you're looking at potentially 
two ladders now with those stacks that are both on sub 15 big blinds. I mean, Pedro, Alexander, Philip, they all need to be very, very careful. Um, it really depends how much pressure Nacho is going to put on them. But so far, been pretty, pretty mm. honest poker. Oh boy, actual hand now for Nacho if he gets played back here. Yeah, and speaking, you know, hypothetically, I think it would be a, a massive mistake, for instance, for um, Alexander or Pedro to three bet get, get in like pocket jacks or pocket tens here. Um, and and that's that, that's why we're going to see a lot of flatting from I think medium to to, to near near top premium because it's really you really do not want to bust in this situation as as one of the top you know four stacks. We saw it a few times yesterday. Uh, it wasn't against Nacho specific. Well, one of the times it was where folks uh, just flatted with king queen ace king yeah. pre flop. <laughs> And would you look at that, Markesh just really playing the playbook of what you need to do is to just not get involved. What about Pizarri, though, with ace-jack in the big block? Flat. Yeah, pure flat and just hold on for dear life when you flop well. And hope Bar Barbero doesn't barrel you off. So 10-6-3 mm -hmm. on the flop. Queen still way ahead. Yeah, and I think a normal practice on a board, a texture like this, would be to check call a bet with ace-jack, but especially without a club in your hand and because, you know, you're, you're of the situation with the, the short stacks, I don't really anticipate seeing Pizarri continue, especially because, from what I remember, Nacho likes to size up. And there it is, 650 into, into 1.3, so a half-pot bet. Got to see a fold from Pizarri. Yeah, I mean, I could be wrong, but I, I think this might be a bit of a mistake. The problem, too, is Barbero, the times that he has things like 8, 9, 7, 8, he's just going to keep barreling. Um, so, you know, I think Pizarri probably wants to send a message to Barbero. I won't be bullied here. I have a big hand. But it's clear that Nacho is prepared to, to really fire off. So um, I don't like this for Pizarri so far. In honor of our French colleague, <coughs> Benny, I will say, second bow! <laughs> the second barrel from Nacho Barbero. 1.5 million into 2.7 million. Yeah, and the, and, and the problem with calling on the flop here too is you get a brick like that and you, you still think you're good and now Pizarri's really blind in the forest here do you think Nacho bets a third time or just checks it back on the river I think he probably should bet um, I think there's a chance he won't but I would like to see you know a bet trying to get value from those tens you are worried about you know, hands like maybe King Jack of clubs that would have got, got there on the river, maybe King Nine of clubs, but you block King Queen of clubs. So there are no Queen X club combos that could have. Let's see what Nacho does. Yeah, and just a. 30% oh. bet here on the river, really trying to get value from that perceived 10. That's more than 30%, Griff. That's 2 million. Into 5.7, yeah? So, yeah, it is a bit more than 30%. You're right. Do I have that right? Yeah. 33% would be like uh, if it was 6 million in the pot. And Pizarri does let it go. So Nacho Barbero moves up to nearly 22 million chips, is playing close to 90 big blinds, pretty much has a two to one advantage now over Alexander Shilko, who sits second on the leaderboard. And we are, what, five hands into the final table, and there's already two, four, four hands, four hands and there are already 
two spots that I can't wait to ask uh, our new guest, Sam Grafton, about. Yes, Joe Stapleton has stepped out, and Sam Grafton, 12th place finisher wow. in the PSPC. Off the crossbar, the off the boot. post. <laughs> Nearly there. Sam, 12th out of 1,014 yeah. is an incredible achievement. Well, thanks, and mate. obviously, we enjoyed watching you play. We were sad to see you go, but <laughs> solid run, sir. Yes, yes, very solid run. Very, very, very pleased to go deep. was a fun experience. Played a lot with all these guys and excited now to see who is crowned the PSPC champion. Well, let's start with that last hand. You were watching it there, obviously. Thoughts? Yeah, I think this is Pizzari's approach. He's a, he's a, he's a tough customer. It's not going to be, you know, adhering to some nitty ICM model that we might think he should operate by, um, you know, playing the streets. I think what you say is actually completely reasonable, Griff. You know, it's a spot also where you're defending less wide pre-flop. It's, it's a spot where you have pocket tens. You're just flatting. Yeah. The range is just a lot more robust, so you don't have to call down the streets with ace, hey, ace jack there. I don't think, oh, wow, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah, it's it's indicative of an exciting final well, table friend. that these guys are going to gonna tussle. They're not going to let Nacho <laughs> run them over. So Shilko's open here with 7-5 suited. Pedro Marques has flattered the button and Toom is going to call yeah. in the big blind with Ace Deuce. Yeah, a rare three-way pot, on, which is uh, give, give pretty exciting. And you can see how Marques is saying that show. Come on, guys, show him what the real rail looks like. Come on, yeah, come on. Because they're, they're rail on. battling. Oh, they're delighted he's playing the hand. That, that's when you have friends. That's when you have friends, you know? And you can see how different Marquesh's like range is friends. here on the button versus Bro, Shoko's played, open than it was from the years, small blind against Nacho's open. Great. Folded the king queen off. Wow. What the fuck is going on? They love me. I'm very beloved. It's, it's like Nacho's need, ho hosting an uh, open mic evening here. Like. <laughs> Generation, nobody invited. Just me with the bottles. <laughs> What an entertainer. I'd love to see it. love to see it. Uh, can I get my phone so I call some Perfect. fake friends? <laughs> no phone, Nacho, and no fake friends. So this is Shilko continuing with a pair of fives, 450K. Yeah, and, and he's got, he can protect his holding, and then he's also got some barreling opportunities if necessary. Uh, turning a six, turning a club to put pressure on mid pairs and the like. Amazing lineup, and obviously, I, I, I guess. You know, it's still very serious business, but everyone having cash for a million already. One of the nice things about this final is everyone's going to feel, you know, reasonably relaxed and okay to sort of chat it up a little, have a bit of fun with the rail. Just, you know, when you put that already locked up, what is a huge, huge score would be first prize in, you know, in most huge tournaments around the globe for the rest of the year. Um, you know, they, they, they've sort of got a, a first prize money already and now playing for, yeah what will be one of the biggest biggest first prizes of the year. So, Sam, the very first hand of the final table, Nicholas Toom found a double up. He started with seven big blinds. He picked up ace king, and Max Menzel called that seven big blind shove with ace three off. Thoughts? Yeah, it probably, probably seems a, a little bit... I mean, a lot of, a lot of players it, it, on this final and in general just played a little bit wider, played a bit closer to chips. It might be just, you know, that they're strong poker players in other formats, you know, cash game guys, just, you know, still, you know, if you're not a tournament specialist, it's not as, not as obvious to, to someone that comes from a different poker background that you should be calling tight or yeah. how, how tight Nicholas is going to be with his seven big blinds, et cetera, et cetera. You know, people are going to make mistakes, and, and, and that's the nature of a big field tournament. We're not just seeing, um, you know, as we would in a high roller, the best of the best, you know, play, play, playing near perfect poker. I mean, I am a tournament specialist, and I make... You know, mistakes every day that I play poker. So oh, yeah. we were watching. Yeah, of course. Oh, yes. Bro. You know I'm going to raise 100%. <laughs> Say 125. <laughs> A little bit of speech play from that, Joe. I want you alive, you know. 
<laughs> They're my lucky charm. I need you to my right. <laughs> the end. We're gonna bust them all, and you're gonna be my to my right. You know? <laughs> I'm gonna go after the big stack. I'm gonna lead you deep. <laughs> I like that guy. I'm going after him. I have to say, Nacho has been on good form for the last couple of days. I love that. I mean, to be honest, he was on great form, like, day, day, on day two, you know? Now now he's a multi-millionaire again, you know? He's, uh, the chat is back. Bro, I, I'm so tired of Germany, bro. I'm so, I was so happy when you guys were out of the World Cup. I say, please, I don't want to play Germany ever again. Ever again. Four World Cups in a row, you guys. Take us out, four. And well, I was there, I was there. Yeah, it's Yeah, I was there on the finals. I mean, yeah, this is a close spot, <laughs> by the way, versus under the gun open. I wouldn't be I surprised so to much. see Tom bin this. This is, this is a genuine decision. <laughs> this is not, talk about that. This is, yeah, <laughs> very, <laughs> very nice fold. <laughs> Uh, from what's obviously a strong online player, you know, a streamer and entertainer, but really nice fold there, recognizing the strength of the opening range, that the, 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 the pocket eights that, you know, don't play particularly well. For sure. What's happened here? No, no, no. Nacho just shoved after the raise, I think. Oh, my God. He wasn't paying attention because he was chirping at the rail. This is, this is a huge spot for Shilko. <gasps> Put in five million. I mean, he has to shove here. He has to be aware this isn't an angle. This is just so disastrous. So basically, Nacho, because he was talking I mean, soccer, missed Shilko's open from under the gun. Yes. Thought well, he yes. was shoving on the big blind. And, he's, and he's done it. He's all in here. And, and he can't call for another eight. This is a massive, massive error and a quick fold. Wow. And we have now seen a change in the chip lead. Holy smoke. As a result of Nacho wow. not paying attention. No for oh. He's just gifted a huge Lucky amount of chips. Lucky spot for me. Lucky spot for me. I mean, it's all happened to us, you know, chatting at the table, being on our phone or something, but this is not wow. the environment. I mean, I've never seen it before, but Sam is speechless. Yeah, I, I, feel, I feel for like, Nacho. What? what? I mean, he... he <laughs> He, he's a very experienced player, so he'll shake this up. He's, I mean, you just saw someone make a, a, a uh, half a million dollar mistake, um, yes. uh, something like this. What if I had it? Yeah, you didn't though, Nacho. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and Nacho needs to dial himself in a little bit because yeah, obviously he's, too, he's yeah, up against five mistake. serious players. You know, um, we just saw a very good fold from the eights. Um, Pedro Marquez, one of the top tournament players in the world. Yeah, he needs to he needs to refocus a little bit. Um, obviously, it's a huge rush to have the chip lead at the PSPC. It's a huge rush to already have cash for a million dollars, but but you you need to uh, need to keep keep hold of the spot that you're in. And and there's still a, a big big difference between winning a million and four billion. I mean, it's it's uh, not it's not wrapped up this tournament. And I wouldn't want him to, to, to leave with big regrets. Menzel, nice hand to pick up in the small blind. Yeah, seems like a pretty clean and easy shove here on about 13 bags. So Menzel shoving small to big. Shilko with 5-4. Yeah, and this is a nice spot for Shilko. He was on my table um, yesterday, and uh, you know, I just looked up his results. You know, it seems like a real, uh, you know, put together some real nice scores, but at low, much lower stakes tournaments in the Czech Republic, yeah. in Rosvedok. Uh, but obviously a very accomplished pro, um, you know, who's bit sort of... Let's make it more fair. This is going to be a big breakout increase. score for him. Uh, and now top of the of, of the leaderboard 71 big blinds it's a great spot for the young man yeah. value town jl observing by the way at least on that hand nacho didn't declare all in at least he didn't shove yeah so he still has 16.9 million but alexander shilko who we were discussing just now is officially chip leader with 17.9 million yeah it's also crazy because i mean if he shoves i mean it's not great you're not excited with with Jack's, but yeah, you, you have to call. I mean, it's also, he didn't try and disguise it, right? He didn't say five minutes, he just sort of acknowledged his mistake. Yes. It all happened so quickly. It happened quickly, yeah. And Shilko was not 
you know, I think someone in that spot might think, okay, wait a minute, is this an angle? Like, but he was just very confident. He's like, okay, this is free chips. Nacho is open from the cutoff. Menzel on the button announces all in with Jack Nine of clubs. And this is pretty pretty loose open, but just like it, this is a, a, the beginning of a bit of a downfall here for like spots like this that are being taken against him. It, it's representative of things being turned around. Yeah, and Menzel. Battle, right? What? You know I'm here to battle, right? <laughs> I mean, you had a hand yes, time. Menzel, one of two platinum pass like winners high. at this final table, and we spoke to Max high, high, before high. the start of play today. <laughs> I'm feeling great. It has been a great journey. Um, I have uh, recently focused more on tournaments. Uh, it's also due to my uh, private life. I have a, a wife and two kids, so I want to spend more time with the family. Uh, not too much on the grind. Um, I have a job as well. Um, so poker and tournament poker is really my hobby. Uh, and it's just an amazing experience to be here. Honestly, I'm not here for the money. Uh, I'm really here to, uh, you know, a uh, little bit the fame factor and trying to take down the trophy. And that's why it hasn't impacted me so far. Um, all the pay jumps, literally, um, I haven't looked at them, to be honest. And yeah, I'm, I'm really here for having an amazing experience. And that's how I approached it so far. So the money didn't get to me yet. Not that it mattered, it doesn't matter. But yeah, I'm, I'm here for different reasons. Max Menzel here for well, different reasons. Yeah, be. pretty interesting. I mean, actually, that's yeah, a bit of information that if you're the rest of the players at the table it would be good to know because yeah he's just approaching this final table a little bit differently looking to take down the first prize and that's why he's just much more comfortable uh, making a shove like that with jack nine of clubs yeah. where it's going to pick up the chips very very often so this is hand 10 of the final table, Nacho Barbero has opened with the Spraggy. Ace, seven, offsuit. Yeah, Barbero gonna try to force his way back into table captaincy. Six-handed, this open. It's probably a little loose, but it's it's not, not terrible. And I would love to see Shilko just kind of start punishing Barbero and, 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 lot, and let him know this is actually my table now. <laughs> uh, by the way, I think I think Flatting is covering stack here is pretty pretty GTO. Nice. Yeah, I think I think it's you, they they're supposed to play super passive. The blinds don't and Marquez here again. See this eight, which is just way more of a troublesome hand uh, when you're covered at the final table. You might see Marquez call here. Um, all options are open. As I say, this is just a very, very strong tournament poker player that, uh, in the form of um, Pedro Marquez. So Marquez but did fold the king-queen last rotation, exact same spots, Barbero, uh, when Barbero had opened. Yeah, yeah I mean, eights, like making a set, you can yes. stack off. Yes. Making top pair, you can sort of be pressurized. So, Rosario will come along for the ride from the big, ace three off. Yeah. yeah, three players going to the flop, which is ace, king, deuce. Barbero with the best hand right now. There are plenty of chop opportunities for him and Pizarri. Yeah, unfortunate for Marquez. Obviously outdrawn and I'm and, and just going to know that he can't continue on a board like this. And let's see. It's very big sizing, isn't it? I don't know, it's five and those are just... Uh... It's 600,000 into 1.8 million. Yeah. yeah, I think this is this is quite chunky sizing. Yeah. Uh, at which which I like with other hands. I think with a7, maybe maybe we want to check sometimes and maybe we want to just bet very, very small some of the time. Enrique on YouTube says, did Marquez get deep in the PCA too? Correct. Ooh. And that three on the turn changes everything. Two pair for Pizarri, who now has 87% equity. Not the best start at the final table for Nacho Barbero. He yeah. now has aces and deuces with a king kicker. Yeah, and no, Bizarre. Why? Go on, Nacho, Nobody. check, mate. This is a big spot, because if, if Nacho puts out, don't value bet, mate, come on. <coughs> it's just, he can't help himself. Oh, wow. And that 
is 1.2 million. Quickly called by Pizzari. Nacho loses more chips. Goodness. And Pizzari is going to chip up to 12.3 million. He's not that far behind Nacho now. He's down to 14 million. Yeah, and, and, and that's you could see, you know, a little bit of emotion on Nacho's yeah. face. Really tough orbit for the great man. Uh, very unlucky uh, to be outdrawn there on the turn. And uh, Pizzari's defensive strategy, uh, checking it over to Nacho, paid off. And you see, there's a real change in, in, in mood yes. at, at the final table. The audience recognizing, um, you know, how serious a situation this is for the players. And, yep. and Nacho's vivacity quelled, um, you know, after that 9-3 debacle. Yeah, and, and the other thing, too, is, you know, I... I, I Great use of the word debacle. Sorry, <laughs> just, just, just have to say. And I alluded to it a bit on that Jack-9 suited shove from Max Menzel. These guys... They, they smell the blood in the water. Yes. They know Nacho's been clipped. It's like, you know, Matrix Reloaded. You see, he's just a man. He bleeds. Like, it's, it, he's, th there's definitely opportunity here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't ever come in here and reference the Matrix Reloaded. Oh, come on. There's some good lines from Matrix Reloaded. I'm a Matrix Reloaded apologist. <laughs> Good. Yeah, and, James, James and, it, it, and, and this is the great thing about main event worse. tables. You know, people say, oh, poker, everyone knows what they're doing. There's just, there's, there's humans out there, you know, with emotions, making mistakes, yeah. getting carried away with the spot, with the, uh, with the situation that they're in. Interesting spot here. Uh, Pizzari as the covering stack. Um, might have expected a race with this actual holding. Uh, but... So have gonna like be so able to apply plash no. pressure no. bet here for protection. So you, uh, I think what? Tom it gonna be tempted to continue wow. uh, and, with you know, a spade in hand, it? two overs to and second it pair. The SBR, because like it's an uh, unraised pot but that much deeper and a little bit harder to get pressurized. I think quite rightly, Tom's played a very, well, he's, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I think that's really nice. He's playing a snug strategy, but this is a spot to carry on. King of clubs. Mm, sorry, I'm a little off. Queen of clubs. Lady luck. <laughs> yeah, and, Always this, coming lady. And, and, and this is also what's gonna happen sometimes. You're gonna be allowed to realize equity when your opponent has a little piece or has a hand that isn't suitable to, to bluff with. And so Pizzari still ahead, having paired his four on the flop and still has the best hand with that oh. jack on the river. Uh, goes check, check. Pizzari says, no, 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 nothing. Pizzari just marked the winning hand. Oh, my goodness. Are you sure we had the graphic right? Pizzari had a pair of fours. Wow. And mocked it. Wow. This is a wild final table. I mean, it's just, it's just remarkable. Uh, again, th that's a pot that's just worth a lot of money. And when Pizzari hears about this, he's going to be a little upset with himself. Um, no, no, no. Look at that, I'll Tom Gleeful. Uh, little does he know that it's uh, even more fortuitous My than. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. It's quite bizarre as well because you might have expected if he thought he had seven five to to far the river with with sort of the nut low or whatever he's mistaken his hand for. I mean, what an incredible start! We've played just over ten hands. We've had Nacho not paying attention and thinking he was shoving on the big blind when there'd already been an opening raise and losing about five million chips. We've had someone muck the winning hand. Uh, I mean, the thing, it, ju just, to, just to, you know, uh, add some context, you're absolutely right, Hagen, and it's, I mean, it's remarkable. I can't remember a situation like that coming from a top level, you know, a very, very experienced pro in a long time. On the other hand, I just want to say, you know, it's incredible, incredibly emotional experience to cash for a million dollars. Yes. We're coming after four days of play. You know, I just want to contextualize, maybe for people just tuning in the final, oh, I, I would never make a mistake like this, et cetera, et cetera. How can they do it? It's just, it's very, very demanding to be out there in the streets. I mean, it's demanding to be in the commentary box wow. for three days, let alone to be making decision after decision. Uh, I'm not sure about this call from Pizzari on the button. I'd love to hear Sam's thoughts on it. But this, this flop between Barbero and Menzel has some potential. Yes. 
Top pair against the open-ended straight draw. Nothing for Pizarri. Maybe th Pizarri might have thought, think, think he's flopped a set, though. You know, we, we never know. <laughs> uh, yeah, and this he is... He remembered what he had. <laughs> yeah, and Menzel, he, he'd rather have a backdoor, but I think his approach will be just 100. to bet his hand. Uh, now has the ace-king, has the kings, nice which is actually significant, um, you know, on a uh, with some ICM to, to have the actual nut holdings. Of course, sometimes Pizarri is going to have sixes and sevens, but just protecting against oh, the ace no. overcut. Oh, what's Pizarri doing? Pizarri, more like Bizarri. And Pizarri going for a raise. Basically saying, okay, this is a kind of cusp hand where I can't continue. P perhaps feeling like I'm blocking King Queen, King Jack, or something like this. But to me, seems, you know, a little bit of a misstep. would rather have like a 6-5, a 7-8, a something like that that can back into a straight. I caught a look on his face, Sam, at the end of that last hand where I think he realized that he had a 4 and... Yes, maybe against some emotion. I, I, I do think that now oh, there is this quest to get some chips back, right? You're trying to make up for the mistake you just made. Yeah, but, like, these are supposed to be professionals. You need to, like, really refocus yourself, go to the rail, talk to your people, calm yourself down. Yeah, and Menzel, I mean, he's getting a, also maybe getting a bit overexcited here. I mean, he he actually, you know, either Pizarri's bluffing or he's got you beat mainly, right? Uh, Pizarri needs... Whoa. Pizarri doesn't immediately oh. release. Yeah, and everyone... I mean, this is some street poker, by the way. Yeah. This is making me excited. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, this is an amazing final table. And I, I really don't know. It's, it's both the adrenaline, it's the million-dollar score. You're kind of high off your... Already what you, you know, accomplished, you yeah. You vertigo at, at, at being, Double you know, already have having cash for a million and now play for four. Well, Sam may be excited, but we've got MetMen77 on Twitch. Worst final table ever. Ever. People are not this bad on my local free rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Give that man a platinum. <laughs> I mean, there's another way to look at it, which is, I mean, it takes some heart there, by the way, to raise raise the queen jack. And there's holdings that would have folded. Yeah, a broken I mean, heart because the last hand he realized he folded the best hand. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the, best hand, the but... chips are moving around this table so <laughs> quickly. It's it's remarkable, remarkable. So, and, you know, on the other hand, you're going to, I think you're going to see sort of Pedro, and Shilko, I mean, not, not with the chip lead, I guess, Shilko, but just playing a tighter strategy and letting these guys collide. Because way, way too much money going in um, to the pot. Marquez, again, with a marginal one, with the 30 big blinds. Yeah, and he's picking the ace jack off. Seems reasonable for sure. What will Shilko do in the face of this re-raise? Yeah, you do, certainly have to stick up for your raises in a lot as chip leader. I think in these specific spots with the unsuited hand, sort of blocking bluffs perhaps, going to be very hard to continue. This is really exactly the sort of hand Marquez is hoping Shilko has in the spot. The offsuit hands that are, you know, dominated by the bluffs, just can't continue, and picks up a nice pot. Pedro Marques chips up to nine and a half million, hovering around the 40 big blind mark right now. He has support on the rail. That is his wife, Sarah. And we spoke to Pedro before he took his seat at the final table this afternoon. <laughs> I mean, uh, I feel great. Uh, it looks pretty unreal to me, I would say. Uh, it's a dream come true. Uh, I mean, 10 years ago, I was watching you guys making coverage of all this, and now being here and being part of it, it's just amazing. Yeah, really, really special experience. I have my plan. Uh, I want to play this final table. I have a big stack and two short stacks at the moment. I'm in between. So uh, I'll try to manage uh, my stack uh, to the win. Um, trying to, I'll try to not get in clash with a uh, cheap leader or something like that. Let's hope the short stacks bust first. Yeah, something like that.
Let's have a shout out for Team Portugal, by the way. Portugal one and two in the PCA main event. Michel Dutani claiming the title and trophy. And now we've got Pedro Marques at the FT of the PSPC, Sam. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's a lot of really likable guys on, on this final. Um, I played with all of these guys and, and it's a, a great bunch of lads. If I had to pick out someone, you know, if someone will give me some odds on Pedro for his stack size to win this thing, I, I would I would bet on this this guy. This is a very very strong tournament specialist. He's played for big money before, and you know, by all accounts, a really nice kid. Uh, and he he'll be a force at this final for sure. I king ten of hearts. So still six-handed at this final table with 22 minutes to run on level 31. We'll roll straight into level 32. Blinds will be going up soon to 150,000 to 300,000. The shortest stack right now is Flushy, Platinum Pass winner Nicholas Toom, but he's got more chips than he started the day with, currently playing a 13 big blind stack. And things are evening out at the top of the leaderboard. Mm -hmm. Not much separating Shilko Barbero and Pizari right now. Yeah, and this is just hand number 15 of our final table, and it feels like we've been... <laughs> we've had so much happen. Absolutely I mean, epic. who had who had the German rail distracting Nacho Barbera to make a misclick worth 22 big blinds <laughs> on their bingo card? Because you bingo, you win! <laughs> yeah, and Pedro with the defendable Queen Jack. It's, it's really cuspy with these offsuit hands, but Queen Jack... Certainly going to make it into a defense range here. And nine still good on a 10 trade deuce flop. Jack's back. Jack on the turn, and Marques is now a 95% favorite. Yeah, great card for Pedro. And Nacho. Just going to use the advantage of the chip of, of being the covering stack to just bet sort of what his hand is worth uh, in this spot to just protect against a, a stray king or a stray ace. And it's bad news when you get called, of course. That's the downside to it. Uh, nine showing down for a lot less after a bet and a call. And, and I mean, there's just some. No, oh, he won't. Doesn't turn into a bluff. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. And nice pick up for Pedro. Who's pretty much even with Pizari now. 10 million each. Barbero just shy of 13 million. And Alexander Shilko from Belarus still leads this final table with 16.8 million. Approximately 65 big blinds. Yeah, I would love to see Nacho try to recenter himself with some support on the rail or something because yeah it's it's weird knowing that you know you do something like that and half an hour later you know the whole world's watching the whole community is watching and seeing that you need to just i mean these things happen every once in a while something weird like that is going to happen to you if you're not paying attention so just try to tr try to focus back up you're a good po poker player you're one of the most accomplished on this table if not the most experienced for sure just just, just breathe it out and see if you can battle back. You're still in a great position here. I mean, he could still very easily win this tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there you see him just, just doing some stretches, clearing his head. Right. Also, a nice spot for Shilko. I think ha already has some tournament wins at this young age. Yeah. Um, more? Almost yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Jack 9-9. Nine, nine. Ace high, still good. Pizari with solid equity, though. How old is Shilko? Looks boyish. Shilko is 26 years old. He's from Minsk in Belarus. Yes. Yeah, and Pizari going to continue with the gut shot. And gets there on the turn, plus. Yeah, and th this is going to be interesting to see from Shilko now. 
for sure this is a hand that we can we can bluff with uh, in this spot. I think you do probably want to be very polarized, but I don't know whether he's going to approach it in that way. You got to be yeah, and it. Yes. So explain to the viewers, Sam, what hands are you attacking here on this turn card? What intentions are you trying to maybe fold out all those pocket pairs it might have called? Yeah, I mean, you could, just, you could just pressurize a jack. No, that can't improve, you know? Um, yeah. I, I think actually, like, checking back a queen, which can hit a queen and make a straight, I think you actually want to pull from, from some sort of pure air balls. But right. uh, uh, it's, 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 it's fine. It's absolutely fine to check. Of course, mm -hmm. and um, Pizzari betting nine hundred thousand, roughly half pot. Yeah, and this is this is quite nice from Pizzari. He's sort of keeping his range together, not putting in, you know, a huge bet, um, even though he has a you know an incredibly strong hand. And Pizzari doesn't immediately release. Yeah, will fall. Now he does. Yeah. Now he does. He played a really nice hand against me where he he, he defended king-queen, flopped king-queen, check-called, and then put out a small bet on the river. And I, I, I mean, I had four time banks. I used the time bank to really, really bank on a raise. And then, yeah, and I didn't. And he, he was nice enough to show me for some reason. But he's well, definitely... Well, thinking about raising. Yeah, yeah. Let's hear from Prezari, the Brazilian who lives in Miami. That's unbelievable. That's amazing. I can't believe it that I, that I made it. Yes, yeah, it's a great feeling. Yes, I'm not a professional player, so I'm here. I was here with my family. I, I brought everybody here for the weekend. We had a great time, and now I, I reached the final table. It's amazing, yeah, great feeling. What would it mean to win? Oh, my God. I have no words to say. If I win, it would be amazing, the best feeling in the world. I, I hope I can do it. He seems like a lovely guy. Yeah, what a sweet. It's actually, it's so lovely to see these VTs because sometimes when you're watching people play, so, uh, you know, they're focused, they're serious, it, and, you know, you zoom in on them when they're in hands. Everyone seems quite severe, but actually real joyful and fun characters that we've got at this final table. And, and you can see how much it means to him and, and it means to Pedro. Nacho Barbero. Chatting to players, including Adrian Mateos. In your hand? Possibly explaining what happened earlier at the final water. table. Yeah. Uh, Cyclops Matt, watching on Twitch, says, Sam, where did you get your shirt from that you wore on day three? Quality jersey. I mean, they've all blurred into, into it. What, what jersey was I wearing? I'm afraid, uh, I'm afraid I don't know. <laughs> Well, yesterday was the PCA hoodie. You were you were Aqua yesterday. It was some kind of sports jersey. I didn't recognise it. Oh, Bel Belgium away kit. Yeah. Uh, Belgium. Belgium away kit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this is going to be an interesting hand because Pizzari raising small to big and flopping the gut shot. Let's go, Tomb. And Tomb with topist of pair. A lot of money out there already, 1.8 million, and Tom's playing 2.6. Could be th that you want to just protect the eight and get it in here and now. Of course, if you actually knew Pizzari's holding, it's a nice one to just call and let your opponent barrel off, potentially turn a nine. And I don't think that yeah. Pizzari will be able to call this with just the one over in the gutter. You might say it's too much. <laughs> too much. Oh, Griffin, we love you. <laughs> That is a foul from Pizzari, and the rail goes wild. So much support for the man known online as Flushy. He's now playing 17 big blinds. And let's hear oh, from this Platinum Pass winner, because we spoke to Nicholas Toon before the start of play today. It's an out-of-the-world feeling. I, I can't even process any of it. It's... I just went from day one all the way to day five and now sitting at the final table playing for um, money that I can't even imagine how much it is. And um, yeah, I'm just sitting there playing my best game. I studied for the last couple of weeks every night and now I get rewarded for it. It's like, indescribable. I, I, I can't process it. 
not, not nothing. Mark C. Mark says the clapping was not for that hand. The clapping was for Griffin's joke. <laughs> um, again, another lovely kid. And by the way, this is not the sort of play you really want on the short stack. There's a lot of people who undervalue their short stack, undervalue their tournament life, would be sort of, yeah, high off winning one million and would just put the chips in. This is someone that, you know, by from what we've seen, really seems to know how to play the short stack, how to duck and dive, how to accumulate chips, and, and not someone that's going to, you know, if you're the mid-stack Pedro or Menzel, and maybe just hoping that this short stack's going to bust out, it's, it's, it's not going to happen easily, I don't think. You're not going to get these chips from Tom without a fight. Yeah, Tom's the, the people's champ right now, just sure. the, the every man, but talking about studying every day. I got to say, I was sorry to hear you bust, but I'm glad it's him instead of you. <laughs> <laughs> so Nicola Tum is 29, works for an accounting firm, the family firm. So he said no matter how much he wins, he's going back to work. He can't leave the family business. Wow. Don't give up the day job, kid. You'll learn to choose money over family eventually. <laughs> Queens for Pedro Marques. Lady Luck. Nacho Barbero is in the small blind with nines. Yeah, and Nacho... Yeah, just calls. I think this is completely the correct play. Yep. Realizing that Pedro's not going to step way out of line. And, and Nines just doesn't get it in against worse if he were to three bet or such like. No, yeah, got to play as a call here. And men's not going to be tempted in. Obviously, a lot of the time, your, both your opponents have high cards and you have low cards, but really doesn't feel like... Um, the flush draw is going to be good enough. Just gets out the way. Ace, Jack, Jack. Yeah, a flop no one really wanted to see. Pedro deciding, does he bet his entire range here? Or does he want to check queens and kings specifically? Can also work in checking some full houses. And another overcard comes to Barbero's pocket nines. Pedro going to be aware that Queens can still be beat to a hand like, you know, ace-eight suited, ace-five suited, even, even sometimes ace-queen. So this has gone check-check on the flop and on the turn. Yeah, Nacho doesn't show down for much here, but no. don't think he's going to be in the mood to bluff. Marquez, of course, can also just check down a, an ace-5 or ace-6. Check to showdown. Nines no good against Queens. And when am I not? Nacho cannot win a hand. Well, Nacho is in second place still, but only just... Pedro Marques has 45 bigs. Nacho, 47 bigs. Do we proceed? Yes. Yeah, and, and Nacho, Marquez, and Pizarri separated by three big blinds as the middle stacks. Hand 20 of the final table. Less than 10 minutes left on this blind level. Jack five for Menzel. It's been folded to him in the small blind. Yeah, pretty unpromising holding into the chip leader. See for chips, you would want to limp it, but you're going to just get raised a lot more often. So Max just having a little think. It's going to depend what he thinks of Shilko. Yeah, and I quite like that fold. I think Shilko is going to raise hands exactly like he had eight three off and, and, and force you out and check I've, hands that dominate you. I've just spotted a couple of familiar faces on the rail. 
Ramon Kalilis, the reigning PSPC champion, and Papo MC. They've come to watch the action. Yeah, of course, Papo and, and, and Nacho probably know each other well uh, from the Argentinian poker community. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Very cute. Very cute indeed. One of these guys is going to follow Ramon and become a PSPC champion. Yeah, and obviously the other thing about relinquishing relinquishing the chip lead is, you know, Nacho's given up a lot of his leverage here. Now Jack eight off just becomes a snap fold when you're opening into a covering stack, even one covering stack or stacks um, that are similar to, to yours. Um, going over to Papo for a, a part on the shot. Look at that. I don't think it's going to he, he Yeah, you can see him in the background. Just shaking it off with his friends. And this is not an open that I would make. The deuces properties here on the button locking folds. And Shilko with the suited ace. Oh. And wow, really interesting. Well, he limped the button. Oh, he limped the button. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, I mean, again, not something I would do, but yeah, interesting. But probably bet, almost better than opening, I don't yeah. know. At 24 big blinds. It's probably just a fold, but yeah, I, I appreciate that uh, he wants to just go I mean, it. the problem with limping is you let in like seven, six off as well, though, yeah. right? You just let in two other cards. Oh. Wow. Come on, Griffin, get excited. We've got street flash poker. Well, it's a fake street flash because of the Just pretend you Menza, can't see But Menzel's I can see cards. it. I've seen yeah. too much, James. And, and there's a lot of interaction here, actually, Marquez, with the gut shot and two overs as well. Menzo may be tempted to take a stab at it. After all, the board isn't going to get much better than this for your pocket twos. Only two over cards. 425,000. Yeah, and and this, this is quite big sizing as well, right? Um... Yeah, going going the two two big blinds, going for half pot, and Shilko now will decide how to approach things. Does he want to call, or does he want to raise? I think check raise is what you want to do when you have a five, or as they would say back in the day, check and raise. <laughs> yeah, Marquez will get out of the way, and Manzal immediately releases. Oh, boy, still forward. Deuces, of course, sort of blocking the, the, the semi-bluffs. Miami lawyer daddy watching on YouTube, referring back to Nacho's mistake. The crazy part is, if Nacho had shoved, Shilko probably has to fold? I mean, once you know it's a misclick, it becomes different. I think if, if it was like, okay, what hand does Nacho put in for this? He's always got an overcard or whatever. Yeah. But once, you know, the, the pairs also play really good against any two card spots, right? Well, if you know he's only shoving suited aces and such like, now you're gonna bust 30% of the time. But when he can have jack seven off suit, you're just in an amazing shape some of the time. So, uh, you know, I don't know, by the way, if, if he would fold, even if Nacho did it deliberately, but, but certainly against a misclick, I don't think he will. And he's dialed in. You know, he was watching everyone yeah. fold in turn and, and, and would have been aware that, that, that about of Nacho's misstep. Marquesh in the small blind, queen nine. Yeah, and again, this is going to be an interesting hand, interesting dynamic, because these two probably supposed to play somewhat cooperatively, not bloat the pot, but Pizzari not showing... Just shown an inclination to put money into the pot at every opportunity. Obviously, it doesn't flop anything here. And Marcos will put out one big blind and pick it up. But it'll be interesting to see if these two start clashing. 
Burns Cash has just joined us on Twitch. OMG, yeah, is this final like table with huh? Flushy? Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you for your question. Imagine, like, it's sick. We're so deep in there. What like, is this? Like 90 bigs or something. Final table of the PSPC. Six players competing for that sick trophy and a first prize of $4 million. 12.3, that is That's approximately 50% of the total prize pool still in play. Wow. Gambolo says, can you make a new intro with your names so I can check who is who by voice I'm new here? My name is James Hartigan. His name is Sam Grafton. Hello. Griffin Benj has gone to the bathroom, but he will be back soon. And Mark Kerr's with King Queen. Now an equal stack with Nacho might be more inclined to play this hand. All three options possible here, by the way, depending on... Pedro's approach. Yes, and goes for the three bet. Sizing up a little bit. And Nacho, again, I think, depending on how he approaches final tables personally, all three options are possible here. I think that a lot of tournament, online tournament guys might elect to fall back this hand. Um, you know, sort of live cash game guys, see a flop. N Nacho might just let it go. And I, I think that that's, that that's reasonable. Pedro hasn't stepped out of line too much and does relinquish it. And it's a sign of, of, of Pedro's confidence there. He's picked the ace-jack off, the king-queen off, taking all these offsuit blockers. They do add up pretty quickly, by the way, given the, the very narrow range of hands that you can, you can get in there for 45 big blinds. Um, now, obviously, when the players are at the final table, Sam, they don't have their mobile phones, game integrity. Sure. Clearly, Alexander Shilko needed to get in touch with someone so use the phone of Pedro Marquez's wife. <laughs> well, it's, it's a camaraderie of, of pokers, poker players in the poker community. Um, Thank you. I'm just hoping that she's on the Wi-Fi, because anything you do on data here, that's a big yeah, favor. <laughs> I mean, I know they're all millionaires, but still. <laughs> Let, when the plane landed, Sam, switched my phone off flight mode, had forgotten that I hadn't switched off roaming before I left London, read three emails, and then got the text from Vodafone. So far, you've spent £104 wow. on data. Wow, expensive. £30 an email, that's a high price to pay for sure. The emails weren't worth it, by the way, in case you were wondering. Yeah, and Pedro quietly crept up to 50 big blinds ahead of Nacho. Obviously, you know, sometimes in the commentary box, we can make a little too much of these changes in position. There is always going to be jostling. But I do think that he's going to be very, very comfortable on this final and playing that stack. And Nacho will limp in with the 9-3 off. This will be the last hand of this blind level, by the way. Last hand at 153. We're about to go... Sorry, this... Is the last hand of 125 250. 153 will be the new blind level. And here we go small blind versus big blind. Queen 7 5 on the flop. This is all Menzel. Yeah. Top pair for Menzel. Barbero with essentially nothing. Thought he might have elected to bet 
the 9-3 here, just because you have a diamond block at backdoor diamonds, and you can barrel an 8, a 6, a club, and Menzel with a sneaky check back, turning three queens. The wickedly talented Adela Dezim. And I wonder if... Now, Barbero is sort of... I mean, let's be... Oh, wow, Menzel goes for it again. Oh, my days. Nacho Rivers a pair. So sneaky. And this is pretty strong pair in the check line. I mean, this nine is pretty... Should be pretty nutty. A lot of queens get bet on the flop. Almost all queens get bet on the turn. And we'll far out 275. And now Menzel will spring the track. Trap. Thinking now about how strong Barbero is. What? Just calls. Just flats with the trips. Oh. Wow, what we were. Well, what's just happened is that Max Menzel has chipped up to 6.3 million, but. Nacho, start of day chip leader, has just moved down into third place. Pedro Marques is now in second by default. Alexander Shilko still leads. Yeah, and I, I think Nacho going to lose chips there, whatever. If he, if he hadn't, if the river had come an ace, he would have bet, or a king, he would have bet. He's always going to, I mean, he's sort of lost, he's lost the absolute minimum there, by the yeah. way, Nacho. I would have bet the flop, probably. So, now, but, this tells a bit of the story, Sam. Obviously, those are the chip counts of the six players. But now that we are officially playing level 32, now we're at the 150,000, 300,000 blind level. The biggest stack is 55 big blinds. The shortest is 12. It has got shallower now. Yeah, a lot more, very, very much more condensed. And going to be a few more um, collisions, you would imagine at the stack depth. Or although, as I said, you know, Nicholas really making the most of his stack. Pe Pedro also someone that's not going to be inclined to get in these 40 big blinds without a really, really strong holding. Average stack right now is 30 big blinds. Really interesting hand. I mean, uh, maybe I'm not doing Menzel justice. You know, was up against a covering stack, but really, you know, given his speech about playing for the win and, and the aggression we've seen in other spots, a little bit surprised by the conservative nature of that call. Uh, interesting hand anyway. And now Shilko with the 10-5 off in the big blind. You certainly get to call a lot, lot wider when you're covering your opponent. Don't know whether this makes it into... The range and we'll lay it down whatever price was being offered on Pedro Marcus at the start of this final table the odds are now a lot shorter now he's sitting in second place yeah As we commence hand 27 of the final table of the PSPC. A7 suited for the short stack at the table. Platinum pass winner Nicholas Toom playing a 12 big blind stack. Yeah, and he's passed a lot of open spots and even, even jamming spots. But the suited aces of all stack sizes make for good opens. Doesn't. Go for it, though. Just lays it down. Um, definitely on the more conservative side, um, which is which is an interesting contrast to the the rest of the table. It's certainly true that if people other players are playing too low, loose, you should tighten up somewhat. Think think it would have made a good open though. And Menzel with the 10-8 off on the button. Like the deuces, another hand that potentially just drops out of your opening range under ICM and does lay this one down. So we're blind v blind. Shilko in the small calls. Marques in the big.
John Wesley asks, how do they prevent people in the crowd passing on info from live stream to players? In a word, or rather in two words, they don't. But yeah. obviously the stream is on a 30 minute delay. So yes, you can get information of hands that were played half an hour ago, but you're not gonna get any real time assistance. Yeah, I mean, we couldn't have a situation where the rest of the world knows what whole cards your opponent had, but you don't, wouldn't be fair. And again, we just see, you know, two experienced tournament players, despite Shilko's young age. Um, this is what you might expect a little bit more from a final table, a more cooperative strategy. Queen Ten of Clubs, which is, you know, these suited broadways often in the raising range at this stack depth, just checks. And Marquez taking a hand, which you would normally ISO for value and just checking it back both of them incentivized to just keep the pot small. Both of them with hands that, that show down somewhat, that if you bet, don't fold out better. <laughs> it's quite disappointing to just see some, some sensible, conservative final table poker after all the carnage we've had over the last hour. I think that this is quite reasonable. Yeah, and Sh Shilko basically with the nut queen. The only, only question is whether Marquez could make it in very, very thin, thin, thin <clears throat> value bet on the river. Don't think that's something he'll do. Okay. Wow, and this is, I wonder if this is a value bet, by the way. What is, what is that, one big blind? Is this, has he, is he value betting queen 10 height, by the way? I really think that's what's happening here. And Marcus surely has to call. He's just a little unsure about what's going down. Would, it, it's a confusing bet, right? Yeah. Wouldn't it? Queen high. Does make the call. And Queen high, no good against ace high. <laughs> <laughs> a little chuckle. A little giggle. Huh? Just making sure. Uh, <laughs> a little giggle from Shilko at the cheekiness of the bat. And look how flat those stacks are now. Shilko with 53 big blinds. Mm -hmm. Mark Kesh with just 45. Nacho Barbera, 36, 32. Can I go to one, my Bunched friend? Bunched up. Can I go to one? Hydrating. Yeah, and, um, you know, I, I think I commentated the, the PCA final and we came back for the final day and someone it snap busted and it, it just released the tension. Everyone feels like, well, okay, for, uh, some work has been done for the day. We've ladded up a pay jump, yeah. sets everyone at ease. You made a bit of money on the day. Uh, we're even more shorthanded. And here with no one busting, Tom, you know, seemingly fighting to the very last with this short step, yeah. refusing to put any chips in bad. The tension's sort of growing at the table. Nacho, so gregarious earlier in the, you know, in the hour, sort of had his wings clipped. And, you know, a much more serious demeanor to everyone. The high of cashing for the million wearing off a little bit. Mm -hmm. And these guys realizing this is gonna be a long old day Winner. of poker at the highest level. I'm getting word from Sam Grafton's management that it is time for him no. to part the commentary booth. I'm enjoying Apparently, it so much. You have another important engagement at 2.30 and you are required to leave. That's terrible. That's terrible. Well, I'll be, I'll be tuning in later because this seems like a very fun final table packed with, uh, with guys who are, you know, all sorts of different styles of poker. So enjoy, guys, and I'll see you later. Our thanks to the squid. Sam Grafton, ladies and gentlemen, 12th place finisher in the PSPC a representative of Team PokerStars Pro, who hopefully will be able to join us later on on the stream. And a question from Key Lee. How do the players go to the bathroom if they need to? 
They stand up, they walk away from the table, they find the nearest public restrooms, use them, walk back to the table, retake their seat, and carry on playing. Thank, Thank you for your, your question. question. <laughs> Joe Stapleton back in the mix. Hello, my babies. Pizzari attacking this min continue from, from, from our cast small line to big blind. And with a very small raise, it doesn't really represent much. You know, really kind of repping t some sort of two pair or a draw, and but it's, you know, you don't really have much of a defense with that king eight, especially because you block one of the straight draws. So nice hand from Basari there. And everyone seems to have calmed down now, Griffin, after the early calamity, the debacle, yes. as Sam described it. Nacho's punt in inverted commas, and then Pizzari mucking the best hand and realizing it a few seconds later. Yeah, just a wild start to this final table. It's only been, hasn't been even, hasn't even been 30 hands. And this is what we've seen so far. Not the way people would have predicted. Nicholas Toombs still in. Nacho Barbero in third. I kind of feel like I woke up out of a coma. Like, what year is it? <laughs> is Nacho still chip leading? No. Oh, you missed my uh, my, my great two. I didn't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> two with the ace ten on the button, and is just gonna shove over the cutoff. Shilka open, and this is gonna be a great opportunity to to gain some blinds if you can dodge some big big wake ups in the blinds. If you can dodge a oh, wait, wake that, up sorry. in the blind, sorry, you can dodge he has the big blind. Yes, he has the big blind. I thought he was on the button. Also I'm glad he's learned to verbally declare his all ins. Yes. Very important. I'm still gonna need that whistle. Yes, I'm thrilled that we have Canoopal on the rail, but the whistle, too much. The hat, fine. The whistle, too much. Well, I hope you've been enjoying all of our coverage from the Bahamas. We stream the PCA main event. Now we're streaming the final table of the PSPC. And if you watched our streams from the European Poker Tour in 2022, hopefully you will consider voting EPT Live as your favorite live stream for the Global Poker Awards. Globalpokerindex.com slash awards is where you can vote. There are two or three, maybe even four categories, which are fan votes, community votes, and this is one of them, fave live stream. So if EPT Live is your fave live stream, please cast your vote at globalpokerindex.com slash awards. And that's a vote for every single person that contributes to this. We've reached hand 30 of the final table and we are still six handed. 15 minutes into level 32, blinds 150,000, 300,000 with a 30K big blind ante. Action has been folded to the blinds. Niklas Tum announces all in. He shoves small to big with ace deuce. <sighs> and Nacho Barbero calls oh, with king queen suited. What a huge moment for our platinum pass winner. Gets it in good, but he's not a huge favorite here. And being slightly behind has not been a problem for Nacho so far in this tournament. Wait, I'm do this. It's almost a flip. Yeah, not an insignificant uh, shove. 15 big blinds. <laughs> no, Nacho certainly has to call with this hand, but it's it's a huge sweat. The flop is king high. And now Nacho Barbero is an 80% favorite. And Flushy down to 13% is looking for an ace. It would be nice. <laughs> Picks up the wheel draw on the turn. Needs a four <laughs> or needs an appearance from Barry Greenstein. Seven outs. The river is another king. And we lose 
Nicholas Tomb in sixth place. The Platinum Pass winner who free rolled into this 25k tournament cashes out for $1,001,200. Here lies the people's champion. That's what's going on his tombstone. Nice, okay. Congratulations from all of the finalists. Flashy, 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 flashy. All this cheering could use a whistle at you, I gotta say. There you have. Let's go. Does he know he busted? Where's my money? <laughs> Awesome result for Nicholas Tomb and Nacho chips up to 15 million is pretty much tied with Alexander Shilko for the chip lead. I see the universe has corrected itself. Yes. It's just the poker gods know. playing a little prank on us. <laughs> so five players remain. Yes. Everyone now guaranteed 1.25 million. <laughs> and oh. as Flushy celebrates with his partner Timo, we have one Platinum Pass winner remaining, Max Menzel, the last remaining member of Team Platinum. The whole thing just warms your heart. Every bit of this story. Heck yeah. How much you blame? Um, five, six, five, six. Oh, okay, including five, eight. There's no action before. <laughs> and we see. have returned just in time. Did you hear that? I did not. <laughs> Nacho making a big bet against Manzel went Not just to check there hasn't been any action before. <laughs> <laughs> one and a half year, at least. It's better to do like this. I can't believe I made a mistake on a final day, or my biggest final day all ever. Yeah. Life oh. is funny like that. This guy's fault, talking yeah. to me. Oh, oh yeah, blame the rail. <laughs> But no free roll for you guys. Nacho <laughs> seems to have recovered from that mistake, and he has now reclaimed the chip lead, Griffin. But I don't think it should be lost on us, uh, you know, how close Nacho was to complete and utter blow up. I mean, losing that hand brings him to, what, 6.3 million? Like, would have been second, second to last in chips. So, got it in there with the king queen suited. I mean, slightly behind. It was in a big. It was a big flip, but did not expect to see it go down like this. Coming into that final table with almost 20 million chips. There was just like a weird side mission. It seems like where <laughs> Tomb lasted a little longer than we expected, and Nacho will drop down the leaderboard for a few seconds. Yeah. Under the gun raise from Pedro Marques, and Nacho has got queens on the button. Yes, it was just a little glitch in the matrix reloaded. Will you stop <laughs> referencing that movie? <laughs> Nacho. Trying to decide what he wants to do, and is just going to call with the two queens. Pedro playing around 41 big blinds on this under the gun open. And uh, I think I, I, you know, as the chip leader, you can certainly put pressure on by, by three betting here, but maybe Nacho wouldn't necessarily even want to get in, you know, 80% of his stack here. But they are queens. And also you keep in those worse hands and you're really under repped here. Very specific final table kind of situation here with two queens, I think. Well, they're going heads up to the flop. Which is ace, seven, four. Queen's still ahead. Is it me? Am I, am I Nacho's guy? Am I his totem? He thought Flushy was his totem, and then he knocked him out. I'm glad that I have come back to the booth for the return of Nacho. 
Ibarbaro. Oh, Totem. Nice. What did you think he said? Huh? What did you think I said? I no, I know you said Totem, but then I thought you were saying that then Tomb was the Totem. Like, I thought there was some sort of... Not everything is oh, a crowbar pun. Oh, I thought it was pun. a pun. I don't know. I was like, I've never heard you use to totem before. And then we started saying when Toom got busted. As the, Sorry. As the newly appointed president of crowbar puns, that's where Griffin's mind is at a good 98% yeah. of the time. Sorry if I'm a little too much for you. Exhibit A. <laughs> It was so good. I had to use it twice. He wasn't. He wasn't here. He didn't know it. He didn't hear it before, so I had to do it again for Joe. So, no continuation bet from Markesh on the flop, but he has now bet the turn. One point two five million. Is there somehow a brick bigger tournament going on somewhere? That must have been a huge bounty that just got pulled, right? There is a bounty tournament taking place today as Nacho calls. Them. And the four of hearts pairs the board. I mean, it's yeah, Mark Hesh is, is attacking those pocket nines, pocket eights types hand that might fall to a big bet on the turn. You know, you think Nacho's range is kind of capped here, not betting on the ace high board. Sometimes, you know, he might check back the flop with the ace, but more likely going to be more weighted to hands like eights, nines, jacks, queens, which. You know, you're probably not getting folds from the last two on the turn here, but you're probably going to get a folds from the others. So now you have to ask yourself, do I want to try to bet out those hands? And then, of course, the 10x combos that can also call you something like king 10 suited or, um, you know, queen 10 suited that might call on the button. So Markesh really thinking about whether he wants to go for this. And if he does, I would anticipate it to be quite a large bet and a pretty tough spot for Nacho because Markash could be playing this way with an ace, but it does end up going check, check. You know, the problem with that spot, if, if you lose this hand right here, you're gonna be left with 37 big blinds in Pedro's spot. But if you had bet there and gotten called for, you know, 10 more big blinds, suddenly, Let's go. you know, Let's you're in this trouble. Rolling. <laughs> that show is back. 18.6 wow, million. No, wow, queen. <laughs> 62 big blinds. He has the chip lead. Max oh Menzel, the shortest stack right now with 18 bigs. And we have still got 35 minutes to play at this blind level yeah, before we go like break. The worst card for you to A lot of hoopla for nothing, you know? Taking so much. We thought it was so going to be years. nice and easy, you know, probably tomb bus first and nachos the chip lead. And we went through all this flip flop and all this crazy drama. Sadly, we're it's just, all. We're it's just back to where we were. Sadly, it's all going to get cut out, cut out of the TV show. <laughs> Alas, most of the rail has disappeared now, as they were here for Flushy. Maybe a few people still supporting Max Menzel, the last remaining Platinum Pass winner. I'd be out there spending my boy's money so fast. Sorry, been one of the most more active players on this final table. If you're anything like me, you're rooting for a nacho versus pizza heads up match. Just settle the score once and for all. <laughs> and what you want is ace king versus queens so that you can turn it into the perfect, the perfect race analogy. Race situation. Like pizza versus nachos. nachos. The battle of the melted cheese. Benzel, the shortest stack now. Shilko, second in chips, hovering around the 50 big blind mark, opening on the button here with 6-5 of diamonds. 11, right? You know what I like putting Can on I my nachos, eight. actually? What's that? I get Mexican food. food? Uh, Barbera <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Bizarri defends with king seven and pairs his seven. Shilko pairs his six.
My God, there's some real dummies on YouTube right now. Where's Ed when you need him? Ed's, Ed's been doing the Lord's work banning people for the last five minutes or so. Shoko's one tough customer. At least when you're playing as Nacho, you just know he has a monster and he's going to crush you with it. Shilko is like, he is work. You know what he looks like? Looks like an agent from Matrix Reloaded. I didn't. When you said know what he looks like, I didn't. I didn't, didn't know until I told you. I didn't you. know I didn't answer you. You can squeeze a value bet out of Shilko here. I'll be very impressed. All right. Color me impressed. I have a seven. Which, by the way, is the same color as those purple chips. Zari says, I have a seven. Seven is good. Did not this one. Nacho feel about these little pots being traded back and forth. Neutral? Yeah. Sorry, I was trying to think if I could turn neutral and nacho into a pun, but I can't. <laughs> How much longer have we got? How much longer? 31, 31 minutes left. <laughs> and um, I am I am done. Yeah, we'll guys can kick me to the curb. So that's at least 40 yeah. more no, Matrix I references. <laughs> but I'm getting trouble. I'm not this making ma Matrix references. It's I'm so making dangerous. Matrix Reloaded references. <laughs> it's very Listen, I'm not going to hit you with anything revolutionary. The, the and I'm only, not going to go for the third one. The only thing that is worse than you defending okay. Matrix Reloaded is that someone said in so Twitch said chat, I believe I with all sincerity, that The sure. Matrix is the greatest Body movie left franchise left. of all time. Ooh. Franchise, wow. Which is one of the worst takes I have seen in the history of film criticism. I don't know. That's a pretty red-pilled take. I lost everything. Nine, five years. It might be the biggest fall from grace from masterpiece movie to laughable exactly like franchise of all time. I didn't even bother with the new one. I was told to avoid it like the plague. I mean, I kind of liked the last one. <laughs> I didn't love it, but it was like an it was like a it was like a nice it was like an episode of uh, of Sense Eight. They just they just they just hired all the people from Sense Eight. I like that show. It's a nice little reunion. Sensei, check it out on Netflix. Why not 96? Says, would saying Marvel is a better franchise than Matrix be a worse take? No, because objectively... Marvel's objectively better, yeah. Yeah. Consistent. Well, they do the same palette there. They know what they're doing. Although, Phase 4 has been a little touch and go. I would not disagree, but consistently much stronger than the Matrix movie. Nice shot from Menzel here for about... 16 big blinds against the wide button open of Pizari. And for those of you who don't understand the difference between a single movie and a franchise, I love The Matrix. The original movie is awesome, but what follows... <laughs> Heads up, heads up. <laughs> and he's going to Miami afterwards. Boa. Vou tomar uma lá em Miami. Tomar uma lá em Miami. I've been working on a hot... Uh, Lord of the Rings take for a while now. I think it's I've been here. watching you them every Christmas for the last few years. I think oh, Fellowship really? is significantly better than the other two. No, he's, he's gonna think someone, so he's Tell us your hot away. movie takes. <laughs> it was end of this Me or the audience? I think the audience. I'm not really interested. Oh, no, you don't want to? Okay. I mean, as a small diversion, fine. As a major conversation topic, no. We've got the final table of the PSPC. We're five-handed. 
Everyone guaranteed 1.25 million, 4 million up top. And Nacho Barbero with the chip lead right now, raising the button with 8-7 of diamonds. I deserve that. Beautiful hand here with the 8-7 suited. And this should play really clean against this big blind hand. Uh, Shilko needs to start paying fealty to the table boss again. Had a little spot in the lead there, but now it's, it's really Barbero's table. You kind of have to let him do his thing. Well, especially with that hand. Yeah. <laughs> Raise and take it for Nacho. This is your fault. E Barbero. What? You opened the floodgates and now we're getting... You were t you made it a whole franchise thing. Matrix is the best franchise. And I was like, oh, what, what do I think is the best franchise? I mean, how can anyone say Scream is the best movie of the last 30 years? Just to be clear, you can... <laughs> You can oh, say it's man. your favorite film of the last 30 years, and I have no problem with that. You cannot say it is the best well, film okay, that depends, of the last that depends, 30 years. Though, James, do you like scary movies? <laughs> Which Scream? Aren't there two called Scream now? Yeah, but he, he means the, he obviously means the one that came out a few years ago from the directors, Ready or Not, who have great casting decisions, those guys, by the way. <laughs> Barbaro. Nacho. The king eight of hearts. Ibarra. <laughs> Not going to get into it now, but someone talking about Schindler's List. Stanley Kubrick's assessment of Schindler's List is very interesting. Oh, really? We've got a break coming up in 25 minutes, Griffin. I'll talk to you about it then. Work for, work for a bank, financial market. Really? Yeah, yeah. Where are you leaving, Miami? Brico. Oh, I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A I'm lot of Argentinas there. Yeah. It's uh, the second place. Reached hand 39 of the yeah. final table. Just the yeah. one elimination so far. We did lose one of our two Platinum Pass winners, Nicholas Toom, cashing out in sixth place for a million dollars, having invested zero dollars in this event. <laughs> sure, he got here. He tried to pay. We were like, no, dude, it's your, t your seat. Here comes Nacho Ibarbro yet again. Like, Sorry, who? Nacho Ibarbro. Nacho. <laughs> Ibarbro. Ibarbro. Pizarri. Okay. Um, I'm pretty down with Pizarri. I mean, he doesn't really seem to, like, he's just ready to go to battle. And then you flop bottom pair here, and that's the nuts. Yeah, Don't worry. Jack clubs will hold on to. He might muck it again. <laughs> wow. Wow, someone doesn't forgive or forget. Sorry. Shade. I'm sorry. James's favorite movie is Shade with Burt Reynolds. <laughs> No, Shade's the one with Sylvester Stallone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I always confuse those two. Deal is the one with Burt Reynolds. One point one million from Nacho, called by Pizarri. Flat bottom pair. Just another day in paradise. Deuce on the turn. Pizarri now an 87% favorite. Wow, manages to get a free check from Barbero. Check to showdown. Pizarri is going to win this one. 
And Pizzari moves into second place on the leaderboard, but it's very close between him and Shilko right now. 13.8 million for Pizzari, 13 million for Shilko. Yeah, but I spend a lot of time in Vegas. Have we talked much about what the next jump is? No, but it's worth highlighting. It's $300,000. 1.25 million for fifth, 1.55 million for fourth. So like eighth place money or something? Tenth place. Tenth place money. Wild. Wild. Ace five for Shilko. He folds. Pedro Marquez is on the button and has pocket tens. Nice open fold there from the ace five off at the cutoff. Yeah, I was wondering about that. I mean, is, is Nacho still such a dominant force that so you're worried about him three betting you specifically? Yeah, maybe not entirely specific, but, but in general, yeah, it's like you're not. You know, Nacho can put so much pressure on you against your entire range that you don't really want to be allowing. Like, I mean, there's a chance Nacho does it to, to Marques right here, to be honest. This is the exact kind of hand. Uh, if I had to bet one way or the other, I would not be surprised. And I'd probably bet the, that Nacho makes it like, I don't know, two and a half million here and just goes for it. But, you know, is his confidence all the way back? Is he a bit gun shy because of you know, what has transpired on this table? Or is he feeling emboldened by things turning back around for him and wants to reestablish? And there it is. Exactly 2.5. Like Nostra Griffin. <laughs> <But he did. laughs> Have you ever seen that in the chat? It's, so shit. it's ridiculous. I did cold call the amount, though. Come on, guys. Does anyone help me out here? 20 more minutes, Joe. Only 20 more minutes. They leave me hanging. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't leave you hanging if you didn't have your hand up in the air every 45 seconds. <sighs> the chat loves me. You can't get rid of me if the chat loves me. Well, <laughs> I was going to say, folks are going to have to play back eventually. Tens very high up in the range. Yeah. Marquez shoves, gets a fold and from Barbaro. It's not like there's a six big blind stack out there. Vamos. And look at how flat those chips are now. Nacho with 51 bigs, Pizarri 46. Wow. Shilko really only three away with 43, and Pedro just one away from Shilko at 42. So. The max Four people, 18. nine big blinds, yes. Four people, nine big blinds between them. I mean, one hand could take place, and, and some there's going to be a new chip leader. It's, uh, it's not Nacho's table anymore after, after that hand. Ninety minutes till the first break of the day. On the other side of the break, the blinds will go up. Putting the pressure on Max Menzel, who is a sub-20 big blind stack right now. As Pizzari raises the button with king four of spades. Nacho folds the small. Menzel has ace-king in the big. All right, Griffin. Obviously, we're not folding. 18 big blinds. Is this just a standard three bet? Oh, now you want Nostra Griffin again. No, I, I would like a... It's a like it's advice gonna, it's, yeah, more than a prediction. I mean, I think on on 17 big blinds, it's probably gonna <laughs> gonna end up just being a shove. You don't have a ton of room. You don't even really necessarily want to induce a small pair to four bet jam, um, but might might find a three bet. I mean, you would sometimes find a three bet, um, you know, with some bluffs. <laughs> and that appears to be still just the big blind out there, or yes. So no decision yet made. Can 
There's the all-in. Pizarri asking for a count. Nah. Bit of gamesmanship, I think. Just wanting to appear like maybe he's raising a little tighter than he actually would be from the button. We saw Pizarri opening his light is 7-6 off on the button. I've really enjoyed what we've seen from Pizarri on this final table. Really prepared to get involved. Question and a comment from Dan Grant on YouTube. I will try and provide the correct intonation with the way he's written it and his use of capitalization. This tournament is live today? <laughs> this isn't a replay? It's live yes. right and now. No. Thank you for your question. Just someone who every time he's tuned in, it's always been a replay, and now he sees that there's actually live. Unbelievable. I wasn't aware we did that many replays on YouTube, but... Yeah, but like on the breaks, you know? Come on! <laughs> come on! What are they even saying come on to? Guys, I want to call it. <laughs> Max <laughs> Guys, has call. fans. Max <laughs> has supporters. <laughs> Max! Max! Film? <laughs> Mad Max. Nope. Long ago, guys. No? Good guess. <laughs> Maximum overdrive. Long ago, nope. guys. Come on, Mike. Windy City Heat. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, 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 Total Recall? No. Nope. Where's the loyalty? <laughs> Where is it? Where in this world? Mac and me. I'll make open bar. I'll make no. open bar for Pedro them. got it. Due to a kill. Oh. This can quickly accelerate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, any time I give you a movie quote, option one is Robocop, hey, option two is Commando, option three is Bombing. You so glad we did that. <laughs> There's only 27 choices of Bond movies. I know you've seen them all, even if he hasn't. There's actually one I've never seen. Really? Mm -hmm. Which one? The one you're directing one day. Here's one you can guess. Here's one. Which one do you think I've never seen? Um, <sighs> Octopussy, I have seen, albeit probably only once. Mm. I must have seen that movie twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, w w uh, probably, I don't know. Can you give us the actor? Can I? Is this the official series, right? This isn't what... So I've actually right. seen the ones that aren't in the official series, right. and I'm missing one from the official series, yes. Should you give us the... Widely clue? considered to be one of the better ones. On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Correct. Why? Have you not seen that one? It was because when I, when I got all the movies when I was a kid, I was really turned off by George Lazenby. Who's that? He's, He's the guy who plays Bond? Australian James Bond. Hmm. I can understand that, but I think if you can look past his imperfections, there's a really good movie. Now I could, but at the time I was like, ugh, I don't want to watch this one, and I skipped it. You're in for a treat. There's some aspects of it that they use in the re most recent series, right? 100%. Yeah. I wonder if Henry Cavill's trying to get the new Bond gig now that he lost Witcher and Superman in the span of two weeks. Doesn't stand a chance in hell. Too old. Yeah, because they're going Pure and younger. simple, too old. Am I too old? Yeah. <sighs> they're not looking for anyone in their 40s. And they're that's looking... the only reason I'm not being considered for the new James Bond. It's true. Kicking, <laughs> kicking down a door with the pistol out. Hello, my babies! <laughs> <laughs> I could probably get a, a hello in an English accent out. <laughs> Action is on Max Menzel. Starting the hand with around 25 big blinds. He's chipped up a little bit. It's a hand you're not upset about raising on the button. That's nah, a nice little steal. You got a big blocker. It's suited. You get some continues. You're not... You know, engaged to the hand. If anyone decides to, to three bet you, you just let it go. 
Tim Sullivan asks, wonder if anyone has an opinion on poker hands. What poker hand did we miss by talking about that movie? What were they? What did we miss? Was there one? I don't think we missed a hand. Dear poker stars, you did not accurately identify the suits of a player who folded in early position in an unconsequential putt. <laughs> so anyway, Tim, thank you for your question. You know what that sounds like? The comic book guy. Yes, Griffin. <laughs> Wow, a no Griff Griff Tradamus <laughs> strikes it again. again. <laughs> oh Griffin, I love you so much. <laughs> I love you too, James. Shilko, ace four. Forty bigs. Again, nice little blocker. Just try to get it through, but Pizzari, tell you what, he would call with a lot worse than an ace. But he also has the ace, the ace deuce, which is a pretty fair fight. Uh, good chance for a, a tune. Get the right run out. Queen six three board, two spades. Check any check. And oh, a lot of opportunities now. Mm. We're due anyway. We are very due. But of course, Pizzari's just finding some sized up bet that's gonna. I feel like these hands just don't get to show down that often, even though they might chop. Pizzari. Has bet 6.75 into 1.65. Noah Buchan. Marcello Del Grosso. Both made deep runs in the PSPC. And are watching from the rail. And Pizzari just takes the lead and takes it away. Pizzari now second in chips. As you highlighted earlier, Griffin, it's very close at the top. Nacho with the slight advantage over Pizzari, who has the slight advantage over Marques, who has a very small advantage over Shilko. Yeah, I mean, it is very tight right now. Uh, 15, 15 minutes. Yeah, this is five. Ten minutes left on the clock. Ten minutes until the first break of the day and the 50, next 60. blind level. We have four one. Oh, yeah. As we see Max Menzel pick up King-10 suited under the gun. He's closing in on the 30 big blind mark. Wow. Holds this one. Quite a tight lay down five-handed. Pretty tight indeed. Suited Broadway. Yeah, two big blockers, you'd think. I think that's probably a bit too tight. It's not like you're waiting for a shorter stack to bust. You know, it's, it's, it's a hand you can just fold to, to, to three bet pressure. But you can get, you know, the blinds to continue with some worse tens, some worse kings sometimes. Markesh raising the button with Queen Jack. It's been folded to Nacho. He's got Ace Jack in the big blind. Well, what an inspired fold by King Ten under the gun. Well, I'm not a hundred percent positive that, you know, Nacho is going to three bet from the big blind here. Doesn't. So it would have been a fair fight. Doesn't three bet against Markesh. Just calls, and we go heads up to the flop, which is ace, jack, 10. Top two for Nacho. Second pair for Marquesh. Inspired fold. <laughs> and Barbero has checked. Action is on the pre-flop aggressor. Yeah, I, I think that we're going to see a small bet from Marquesh here, but, you know, it's certainly an argument to check back because you don't want to give... Nacho the room to start putting big pressure on with a check raise and happens to have a hand that can can do that if he wants to for value with this top two pair. I think part of the reason Marquesh bets is because he isn't anticipating a check raise particularly often and even with ace jack we do see a call you don't want to just get in all these chips against queen king queen here or a set of tens which are the value hands you're losing to. Nine on the turn. Nacho better than a four to one favorite. Checks to Marquesh. 
and I can't imagine Marquesh wanting to bet here. You know, you're not really expecting to fold out an ace very often. Yeah, he checks behind. And the river brings <sighs> the ace of spades. Hello, Barry Greenstein. A full casa. Por Nacho. <laughs> Ebar. Flaming Barry's out, please, as Nacho rivers the full house. Extra loaded Nacho on this river. If Nacho wins this tournament, I do expect the media to share their fully loaded Nacho. Yes. We have a policy here. Yeah, you have to share. You can't just have one person have all the fully loaded. You need to share it with everyone. Well, Nacho used a time bank card, has decided to lead River, and he's bet 1.7 into 3.1. Is the reason you lead here instead of going for a check raise that you kind of have so much of this board locked up, it's hard to get a bet? Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's a principle we, we, we talk about sometimes. But in this particular situation, you don't really want to check because once Marquez checks back the turn, um, it doesn't seem like he's trying. It looks like he has showdown value and isn't interested in, like, you know what I mean? Like, he probably has a hand like this or a hand like Queen-10 or King-10, hands that could potentially call a bet because you know i know we see nacho has ace jack here right joe but nacho could just have five seven hearts you know um could have something like uh you know king four of hearts like there are some misses here that queen jack can beat it's it's hard to have an ace when there's two on the board right you know what i mean so but that, but the reason why you're not checking with this ace jack is because um you don't think your opponent's gonna bluff anymore and probably has a hand notched below that, that might call this bet. So big spot here for Marquesh, and I wouldn't really be surprised or fault him for a call. He does, does call. It's just a really brutal river for him. And that oh. is a sizable pot for Nacho. Back up to 18 and a half million, 60 big blinds, putting some distance between himself and the rest of the final table. Once again. Big call. Check call, check, check, bad call. We saw it. Trying to take my job. Five minutes on the clock before the first break of the day. Not yeah, that much right. separating Pedro Marquez and Max Menzel now, Griffin. Yeah, not at all. And, you know, just as I was saying, I was surprised by Max Menzel's fold. You can see the collision effect of staying out of trouble, staying out of the hand sometimes, um, where if Max had opened that hand, would have lost that pot with the King-10 instead. Marques got involved and is now in, in, almost at the same chip uh, amount as Max. I just gave you the 2.5 million that they had before, so even. <laughs> Chat on YouTube says, should have ripped the quads. Nacho calls in the small with Jack-5. Menzel in the big with King-3. like this check back from Menzel. Sometimes you want to get frisky and just try to take it down to, to weakness lim limping, but I mean, in this situation. Oof, Jeepers, that. Nacho, what the heck? Jackson fives. But <laughs> Menzel has nothing, right? King high? Can you call 300K with just king high? I think you, you can. I don't know if you necessarily should. You don't really want to be giving away blinds and blinds here. You have the three of hearts. You could maybe backdoor a flush that could be good. But you just have to ask yourself, if Barbero even just has 9-8 off, I just keep come, keep on firing, and, and, and you're not going to be able to hold on. But 
Here's a chance we've seen it before from Nacho. Will just, <laughs> and as the wheel card. The steel yeah. wheel card. Yeah, 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 great card for Menzel. Street flash! <laughs> Street flash, yes. So, Nacho, three to one favorite. Menzel does have a couple of draws here. <coughs> Nacho's gonna go. <coughs> Half pot here, 700. Let's do it together, Joe. Three, two, one. Second bar! <laughs> I wasn't that confident that time. I'll do it again. I, I know where you're going with it now. They only let me do the chop saw, uh, chop pot saw. I mean, no. we know that the straight flush draw is good. He knows that the straight flush draw is good. But I was going to say, a three high flush draw, maybe not always something you want to be drawing to. Well, Menzel calls queen on the river. And Nacho has a lock on this. 2.9 million in the middle. Nacho's going to fire again. Triple bar. 1.7 million. And Menzel mulling a king high hero call? I mean. All right, here's the good news. If he calls here and he's wrong, which he is, he's still the short stack. And but then he can just rip it in pre-flop. <laughs> I love the way you're putting a silver lining on this very, very dark cloud. Hey, call and be wrong, and then you can just shove pre. It's way easier to play a 16 big blind stack than a 23 big blind stack. Way easier. This is likely to be the last hand of the level. With Max Menzel playing multiple time bank cards. Remember, the shot clock gives you 30 seconds per street. If you want longer than that, you do have to cash in those time bank cards. Yep, we've hit the break. Oh my gosh. Hero call it. alert. There's a certain energy that can be felt too when you're on a big final table and you know everyone's watching. You just think, um, oh, you know, maybe this this is just some sick hero call spot where the guy's bluffing and everyone's gonna see how much a hero I am. But then there's the other side of that okay. coin. And he does go with the king eye. Wow. Come on. Vamo indeed. Nacho Barbero wins the last hand of the session, and it is a sizable pot that pushes him up to 22 million chips, back up over 70 big blinds. You booking high? Max Menzel, 15 bigs, but wait, the blinds are going up on the other side of the break, and that means Max Menzel's only going to have around 10 big blinds. Okay, maybe yeah. calling wasn't the right play there, now that I think about it. In retrospect, <laughs> Barbero ends that session where he began as sizable chip leader. He's going to come back from the break with a 54 big blind stack. Philippe Pizzari, 34 bigs. Alexander Shilko, 27 bigs. Pedro Marques, 22. Max Menzel with 12 big blinds, 200k, 400k blinds. When we come back in 90 minutes' time with more live cards up action from the final table of the PokerStars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship.
blind 60,000, 120,000 with a 120k big blind ante. Action folded to Perot. He's out. Shakurchi passes. Ace king for Louis Bhutan. Okie dokie. Pretty committing raise to more than a million. Four million. And a committing re raise from Griffin Benja with pocket jacks. He ain't playing around. The blinds have folded. It's back on Bhutan, and it is all in to call. I think he's interested in what's going on at the other table. Mm. Gonna wait till the last second. If he outlasts the player down there, he makes more money. Well, play is concluded at the other table. Bhutan is now all in, racing for his tournament life against Griffin Benja. Jacks are holding on the flop. Bhutan needs an ace or a king. Turn card is a six. He still has six outs. Five on the river. Bhutan busts. Well, Lou Bhutan, you made enough money to buy yourself a hundred pairs of you. And Griffin Benja now has a stack of nearly 6.3 million. As we head back to the main stage, and we have the three biggest stacks in the tourney. Lucky us. Action's going to start with Canada's Mark Perot. He's first to act. And he folds. Talal Shikurchi has ace nine. <laughs> he slings in the all in triangle. Hey, the count, please. It's 1.8. 1.8. And look who's got a lot of chips all of a sudden. And a dominating hand. Call. Griffin Benja calls. Baumstein and Kalilas have folded. And the blinds are out as well. Showdown. Domination Nation and Griffin is on his way to busting one of the most accomplished players in the field. The flop. Has two hearts. Flush draw for Shikurchi. That's 50-50. Is it, yeah? <laughs> Sounds about right. It is about right. How'd that happen? Turn card is the six of spades. So Talal survives if there's a nine or a heart on the river. It's the nine. Ooh, that'll take the wind right out of your hoodie. Shikurchi doubles up. Griffin down to 4.9 million. Talal now playing 3.9 million. Shorties be doubling. Lines are currently 80,160,000. ,160, and action, the main feature table, is on Ramon Kalilas. And that action should be fold. He does fold. Pedro Padilla has pocket fours. Well, we know a four is out. He's got 15 big blinds. This could go either way. 15 seconds to make a decision. All in. That decision is to move all in. Well, he's got enough to get some folds. Round to Griffin Benja, who has ace jack. 2.4. 2.4. Probably not enough to get a fold from ace jack. A fault. Sure enough, we're off to the races. Pretty easy call for Griffin. Padilla is going to be shoving a lot of worse aces. Pedro has a lot of support on the rail. He's the at-risk player here. Brazilians love a good race. The flop is king 7-5. Fours are holding. The turn card. Is another king giving Griffin additional outs. 
There are now 12 cards which will eliminate Pedro. Griffin just doubled up to Lal. And he doubles up Padilla. Big swing for Griffin. He drops down to 2.3 million. And Pedro has doubled up to 5.1 million. Vamos! Well, the action here is going to start on Pedro. He folds under the gun. Barry Jatin's out. Round to Talal Shakurchi, who has 6 4 off and raises to 340,000. Ace 8 for Griffin. What's in the playing now, Talal? Like 3.5. 3.5? Griffin now in a similar spot where Pedro was in the last hand. Not a lot of BBs. He shoves. Round to Ramon Kalilas in the big blind, who has ace jack. Unfortunately, he has Griffin dominated. He doesn't have him covered, which would make this a pretty zesty call. Yeah, he's on. Yeah. Well, he wants a count. The reality is, it's all into call. We'll wait, though. There's the call. Talal folds. And here we go. Not an ideal situation for Shagwar. Kalilis, the at-risk player. The flop. Queen, Jack, nine. More outs. Griffin can hit a ten to make a straight. Ramon's girlfriend, Nazreen. Six on the turn. And Ramon hoping for a safe river card. Griffin Benja looking for a 10. Try one more time. Taking aim. He misses again. Three all-ins in a row lost by Griffin Benger. Ramon Kalilas doubles up to nearly five million. And Griffin Benger is left with less than a big blind. Bet he wishes he could use that DeLorean to go back in time. Back to the main stage. Nothing left to wait for. Do or die. Griffin Benja calls all in. Rounds the blinds. How much? 150. 15. It is not even a big blind. <laughs> Will he get some protection from Padilla? Pedro. Raises to 550,000. Jatton certainly has the chips, but I think this is a fold. Just let me die for it. It's okay. He does fold. Griffin's got one last chance to win a flip. I win this one, okay? <laughs> if only it worked that way. I had a queen. Don't. There we go. Fours have been good to me before. I mean, it kept me in. That's true, but they also beat you. <laughs> the flop is 6-6-3. Six, six, okay. I like that three. Three makes it harder to be counterfeited. Takes a lot to kill me, I'm telling you. Six good. Six is good. <laughs> Nine of spades on the turn. Spade is good. It's going to be above a six so often. Spade's good. I like that. Mm. Nine of diamonds. No, no, no. What? No? I thought you would be. Yeah, yeah. Nine. Nine, Nine of diamonds. The river. It's another spade. Flush for Griffin. 
You guys sit down over there. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have written a better joke if I tried. Glad to keep this goof around. Griffin Benja is still alive. Now with a stack of 550,000. 14 players remain in the PSPC. Action here on Talal Shikurchi with Jack Tenner clubs. He raises to 365,000. King nine off for Griffin Benja. Well, I can tell you what Griffin's going to be thinking about here. He's going to be thinking about all the blinds and anties out there and the fact that Talal often raises light even under the gun. Come on. He shoves. Hami, hami, ha. Several players to get through. Oh, I should have just called. <laughs> what got me next year? 30 seconds. Griffin still sweating those prize money jumps. 30 seconds probably won't matter. Round to Mark Perot, who's in the big blind. A6. Interesting spot for him. I think he'd be better off letting Griffin go broke. So I'll feel free to use all your time banks if you have a tough decision. Maybe at least you, maybe, you know. I've only got six left. Yeah, you're not going to use gonna, those things. I've got to keep them. Might need them later. Talal calls. Good luck. Thanks. Nice to be ahead in this spot. <laughs> From the under the gun. <laughs> you know, like I was. Uh... It's not often that's going to happen. Yeah. Let's go. Two in a row, boys. Come on. Griffin at risk, but ahead. Guys, if I win this one, will you cheer for me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. There we go. <laughs> I want to hear some bombo. I want to get some. Yes, get them. To the flop. There's a jack. Guys, where's my king? Come on. Queen, queen, queen. Three outs for Griffin. The turn card is a seven. He needs a king on the river. It's an ace. Playing with the Griffin. Yeah, you too, man. Griffin Benja is our 14th place finisher. KO'd by Talal Shikurchi. Cashing the $229,700. Not the comeback any of us were hoping for, but at least he got a bowl of fruit. Two tables of five. We go to a single table when we're down to nine. Five-handed should mean some pretty wacky play. Scott Baumstein with ace four here. Seems like a fine hand for the chip leader to raise five-handed. Remember, we're on another bubble. Every spot is another pay jump. Baumstein raises to 400,000. King nine of diamonds for Kalilas. He faults. Padilla has pocket fives. Fives is a perfectly good reshoving hand. All in. He is all in. Mark Perot is out. Tanal Shikurchi in the big blind. Folds. Can I have a count, please? So it's back on Baumstein. A hand like this, I wouldn't even say is on the line. I think it's below the line. I think this is a fold. Scott doesn't agree with you. He calls. I think he regrets it now. Padilla better than a two to one favorite. Cinco, cinco y cuatro. Pedro's rail is ever expanding. I see Andrea Cari's joined them now. Scott's rail in the cheap seats. Uh, he had nine big blinds. Why do I think that doesn't mean ace in Portuguese? <laughs> Sick brag, he knows Brazilians speak Portuguese. Okay, let's run this. Huh? Additional outs for Baumstein.
He takes the lead. For the, for the real celebration over here. Padilla can still survive. He needs a deuce five or seven. But it's a nine. Baumstein eliminates Padilla. <laughs> I changed my mind. It was a great call with ace four. The Brazilian platinum pass winner cashes out in 10th place for $328,500. Well, there's about to be some room on the rail. A hug from Andrea Kari and the heart will be handed over. Okay, the next guy. Right. Nice playing Good with you, looks. buddy. Scott Baumstein now an even bigger chip leader. And with Pedro's elimination, only two platinum pass winners remain in the PSPC. That is the trophy which will be presented to the eventual champion. Action folded to Ramon Kalilas. He's out. Scott Baumstein. Passes. Mark Rivera has King Jack of Hearts. Now this I'm much more of a fan of. Totally fine to open this hand. Raises to 500,000. Julian Martini has Ace Queen of Spades. And this would be a three betting spot for a lot of folks. Yep, re-raises to 1,325,000. Bucket sevens for Fareed Jatin. Man, oh man, we're getting some good hands here. Folds in the small blind. Talal Shikurchi in the big blind with aces. Jeez Louise, I think the tournament staff must have kept this deck in the freezer overnight. Calling. He shoves for just over five million. A fold from the original Razor. This is a terrible spot for Martini, who is not going to get away from this very often. He calls. Oh. Showdown. Talal is nearly a nine to one favorite to double up here. The flop is King Trey Deuce. Four spade. I take the four spade. Any spade will do. You don't want the royal flush, just just any <laughs> flush. Ten of spades. <laughs> My spadey sense is tingling, James. Julian picks up the royal draw. Crucially, Talal has to fade spades and jacks. He is still a three to one favorite. The river card is a spade. Ace is cracked. Oh, well. Ouch. Nice, yeah. Good, game, bro. nice, nice play. Yeah. Good luck, everyone. Talal deserved better. Well. Sure playing yeah, good luck. Good luck, Scott. Julian Martini gets lucky and takes the chip lead. Good call, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can throw me. So that was the 2019 edition of the PSPC. This is the 2023 PokerStars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship. The final day of this 25K buy-in event with five players remaining, competing for the title, the trophy, and a $4 million score. Nacho Barbero has the chip lead. 54 big blinds. Philippe Pizzari, 35 bigs. Alexander Shilko, 29. Pedro Marques, 22. Max Menzel, the last remaining Platinum Pass winner, has a 12 big blind stack. And that is because, sadly, during the first session of the day, we lost Nicholas Toom. Flushy was eliminated in sixth place. He cashes for $1 million, an amazing return on his investment of $0. And we caught up with Flushy. We spoke to Nicholas Toom on the rail. I just finished sixth place in the PSPC. Uh, 
most prestigious $25,000 tournament and I just came here from $11 tournaments just going into this uh, big event through Data Stream by winning a community platinum pass. It's all, I'm over the moon excited by all the opportunities I will get now with this, um, yeah, with this prize and this uh, acknowledgement. Uh, my plans with the money are that I just stay the same guy as before. I will continue to crush the tables at the limits I play, maybe take some shots at tournaments I really want to play, like the odd Sunday Million Anniversary, for example, that I used to satellite in, now that um, I can lean back and play that from the start. But um, I'm not going crazy, I just think I can do great stuff with uh, the money, probably driving to Ukraine to deliver some, some food and water to the people there. Let's go. That was a great interview, and obviously Tomb's a great story, but I heard he's already playing 200, 400 in Bobby's room right now. <laughs> I am James Haskin. He is Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And we are joined by Maria Ho. Good afternoon, all. So with Flushy gone in sixth, Team Platinum's hopes rest with Max Menzel, who is the short stack right now, just 11 big blinds. We are now at the 200,000, 400,000 blind level and will be for the next 60 minutes. And just verifying and coloring up the stacks of the players at the final table. Trust but verify. Thank you. I think what I would do if I were tomb, by the way, is I would take all my friends on the rail and buy them into whatever tournament is going on right this second and have a blast out there. Yep. Line levels are indeed 60 minutes long until we get down to three, in which case we'll have 30 minute blind levels and then we carry on until we have a winner. The second PSPC champion following in the footsteps of Ramon I mean, Kalilas, who lifted the trophy here in the Bahamas back in 2019. Greg normally charges extra for that, you know. <laughs> you know what was the most upsetting uh, part of my day 22. so far is the 10 minutes it took for me to walk down here where I had to miss what was going on. I was glued to the stream from the beginning today, caught everything that happened. It was an insane first two levels. And then I was like, oh my gosh. I have um, to walk over 13. now to do commentary, okay. and uh, nice my nice internet nice. won't hold. Thank you, guys. Back to where the fuck up started. <laughs> yeah, you're okay. Time, time for the next one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there was Please, a next, next me. misclick, shall we say, by Nacho Barbero during the first session, but he's now back to where he once was. Like 22 guys. million chips, I got to and cards minutes, are in the air. The clock's running again. We have kicked off level 33 of the PSPC. I feel like if you had missed an hour, though, even though it was a very eventful hour, you wouldn't have realized how much stuff went on in that time. You'd That's be like, true. You'd be like, oh, okay, Tomb's out, Nacho's on top, but I'm all right. <laughs> this is hand 47 of the final table. And we have seen a raise from Nacho on the button. He's made it 900,000. We only know one of his whole cards, which is the Ace of Hearts. And Zell with King Four in the small, folds. Shilko in the big blind, starts the hand with just shy of 30 bigs. And we'll end the hand with slightly less shy of 30 bigs. I actually played with Shilko in a side no, event here, and it was my first time playing with him, and I was really impressed by his table presence overall. Like I am. No, he's shy. He's shy. Oh, he's shy. So not so good for me, right? You, I will think about it. <laughs> Come on back. Come on. Come on the Nacho. See so with the PSPC concluding today. It draws a line to this festival in the Bahamas. And the next big live event 
on the schedule will be EPT Paris later this month. Menzel, King Nine on the button. Nacho's already folded. Yeah, 11 big blinds for Menzel. Pretty good spot. It's probably not gonna get much better than this. All right, it takes the spot. Moves all in, gets a fold from Shilko. Pedro Marques is in the big blind, also folds. Manzel picks up the blinds. <laughs> His supporters include Patrick Lang, Julian Menneker, and Daniel Stern. They are Max's friends. Patrick flew in from Taiwan for this final table. No. I mean, is that even possible? It's just such a long flight, and with the, I mean, where, I guess. Yeah, where are we? I, I, like, how soon? That's well, so how far. soon did he decide it was time to fly How many connections is that? I mean, that's like, <laughs> but he went out like, decide like four days ago. That's what I'm saying. He made day two, I'm coming out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know, but what a good friend, nonetheless. Two words, or two letters, PJ. Mm. Oh, maybe. I get the impression that Max and his friends might have a little bit of money. Oh, non-poker money, real money, widget money. <laughs> Nacho folding under the gun. Manzel, Vamos, nine five of diamonds. I have one percent there. I have one percent there, right? I do like um, Nacho's new strategy of. Talk and interact with the rail after you've folded your hand already. <laughs> Once bitten. Great adjustment. Nice. Make him drunk. <laughs> no, the poker player on YouTube says that trophy looks sick. And my recollection of the trophy in 2019 is that Ramon couldn't lift it alone. He needed some help. Cash all in, gets a fold. It's definitely going to be a contender for a best poker trophy like for the more. GPAs. I think uh, it's probably because in that moment, Ramon became a poker pro and was no longer a personal trainer, so he just lost all of his upper body strength. Scratch says, wait, they still read YouTube comments? We're across the Twitch and the YouTube. We love all of our viewers equally. I just want to say our mods are doing a great job today. Ed's banning all the people on YouTube before I even can. <laughs> They're surprised we're reading YouTube. I'm surprised people on YouTube can read at all. Zari versus Barbero. Jack Hyde still the best hand. This is annoying. You have to you have to hit a nine to make either end of this straight. <laughs> I mean, it looked like Pizzari barely put his chips out there before Nacho quickly folded and it's nice when uh, you can take that pot down uncontested when you're on a draw. <laughs> so Philippe Pizzari played poker professionally for a while, but he dropped online poker as an activity because, in his own words, he wasn't good enough. Focused on finance, moved from Sao Paulo to Miami, now plays regularly at the Seminole Hard Rock, plays a lot of the WPT stops in Florida, but still works in investment management. I just want to say, if you out there, you are good enough. Don't stop playing online poker. You're great. you got a real future in this game.
Most people quit right before their big win. Mm. Yeah, but we also know that case money never loses. <laughs> that has been proven. So hang on, guys. King Sad says, I've refreshed Twitter a few times for updates on this, and all I keep seeing is Steve O'Dwyer and his battle with Lufthansa. And as you know, the entire poker community oh boy. is trying to show their solidarity for Steve O'Dwyer by wearing the white bracelets, representing the white T-shirt, the only item of clothing that Steve was able to bring to the Bahamas. Yeah, it's an incredible look. Even Menzel's friend on the rail who flew all the way from Taiwan is wearing a white band. Word has reached all corners of the world. Steve O'Dwyer, a very popular member of the poker community. And everyone wanted to show solidarity with Steve. We're having a whole party tonight. That's right. A whole white party. Going to pour one out for Steve's lost luggage. Nacho on the button. Seems like a slam dunk raise opportunity for Nacho. Iba. Oh. Aces for Menzel. Nice. Now we know if he shoves, Barbero does not have a strong enough hand to call. Do you want to get tricky? I feel like Menzel's gotten tricky in a couple of spots but not this one. The wickedly talented Adela Dazim all in for 6.6 .6 million. And Nacho folds. It wasn't me, it was Nacho! Oh, the Germans are multiplying. Somebody's back from Tombs Rail. When someone said mm -hmm. that the Steve O'Dwyer story had made it onto CNN, I thought it was a troll. It's not. That beautiful son of a bee, he did it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Steve O'Dwyer's missing luggage is literally an article on CNN's website right now. He said, I am going to make it my goal wow. to take this company down. I mean, look, dream, declare, deliver. Am I right? <laughs> That's pretty unbelievable. You know, it's kind of like the first time I saw the widget. You know, first time I saw it, I didn't believe that it existed. And yet here it is. In all its glory, on James's computer. Imagine if he put that much effort into winning it. Oh, wait, he does. And he does. Okay, never mind. The quote they use is, give me back my luggage, you thieves. There is a picture of Steve at the poker table with the caption, O'Dwyer called out the airline on TV during a high-stakes poker game. This is amazing. I got a clip from the live stream on CNN. All press is good press? I genuinely thought someone was joking. I, I'm going to say a lot of that was down to Steve. I do think that what we've done here with the white wristbands has definitely helped that campaign. I you would want, not be getting mainstream media coverage without the white wristband campaign. I just want him to get his clothes back. Is CNN going to be here tonight for the candlelight vigil? <laughs> I mean, we should be able to send him some footage. Okay. Barbero opening under the gun with ace nine, but pocket nine's the real hand from the small blind. All we are saying is give Steve a chance. The At the way. moment, he's probably the only high stakes poker player I know without baggage. <laughs> <laughs> As Marquez shoves there from the small blind with nines, gets the fold from Nacho. So nobody at this final table now has a 50 big blind stack. Nacho, the chip leader with 48 bigs, 
it's getting more and more bunched together now, Maria. When we talk about ICM pressure and what you're able to do and how you should maneuver as the chip leader, when these stack sizes get closer and closer, you don't necessarily have as much wiggle room to take as many liberties as you would like, especially if you start facing resistance Shilko, 8-7 of diamonds in the cutoff. Really kind of a shame Shilko's down to 22 bigs. I felt like a Shilko Nacho. Showdown? Showdown would have been pretty interesting, assuming Nacho ran like a normal person for a little while. So... Shilko has limped with 8-7. Pizzari, ace-10 in the small blind, announces raise. Can't be a raise of very much. 900,000. Okay, more than I thought. Ace-6 for Nacho in the big blind. couple of things that just cold yeah to note about this hand i don't necessarily mind shoko having a limping range off of his stack size i do think if pizari wants to go for the raise to iso in any way i do think you're gonna need to go bigger um i i don't love the sizing and now he's gonna go multi-way with ace 10 out of position against both opponents wow <laughs> Horrible wow. flop for Pizzari. Hits top pair, but Nacho, of course, has two pair. And Shilko has the open-ended straight draw. This could play out very interestingly. Uh, it plays out very interestingly that uh, Shilko makes a straight. Barbera boats up. And Pizzari goes broke with trips. So Pizzari has continued for 1.2 million. That is a raise from Nacho. The purple chips are 500,000 each. 3.8 million is the bet, and I guess Shilko can't go chasing straights now. No, definitely not. He would have to risk his whole stack to do so pretty much, and not willing to do that, you know, not the spot that he was hoping for. Pizzari announces call and we are going to the turn for a moment there i thought he said all in just call i mean it doesn't really matter he's got less than pot left behind good point turn card is it oh my gosh well that someone finally runs down nacho wow. changes everything Someone call a doctor. Someone's going to be in the poker hospital after this one. This is the nacho versus pizza matchup we have been waiting for. Nacho Barbero says all in. Pizzari calls it off, and he's ahead. 95% favorite to double up and take the chip lead. To be fair, we all knew it was always pizza. Nacho Barbero is about to become the short stack at the table unless he can spike a six on the river. He's got two outs. What an insanely huge pot. 27.8 million. The river card is a jack. Pizzari doubles up, and Nacho Barbera will be left with 16 big blinds. Philippe Pizzari, new chip leader with close to 70 big blinds. Philippe with the Philippe flop. Exhale, brother. Nacho. Two pair versus two pair. Ibarro. Nacho gets coolered. Don't cry for me, Argentina. That one is uh, rough. Uh, but we have watched a lot of hands, obviously, where Nacho has just seemingly been very lucky with how the deck has managed to favor him in many situations so you know any professional should be able yeah, to sure. rebound still got a decent stack 15 big blinds enough to mount to come back
27.8 million for Pizarri. I mean, it was quite literally the first time I can remember Nacho being on the wrong end of a cooler. Yeah. For like the last three days. Huge advantage now for Pizarri. Now he has the chip lead. Let's see how he wields that big stack. Let's see how he leverages it against the other players. No, I know what you're saying, Maria, about a, he's a professional. He should be able to recover. You mean mentally. I mean, still at a big-time disadvantage. Yeah, but if you look at, you know, the other two short stacks, Menzel with 20 bigs, Shilko with 18 bigs, it's really not that far apart in terms of the separation between the bottom three stacks. And... Should he double through Pizarri, you know, then everything would be very much bunched up at that point. So anything can still happen. Action has been folded to Nacho on the button. Fold to queen eight. So it's Menzel in the small. He's got king six. I gotta tell you, I'd probably not get super involved in many pots and just wait to see where Nacho's slide is gonna end. I said 590, but I cannot bet 590. Menzel trying to raise to 590? Yeah. You say 590. Oh, it's a call, right? So. Mm. Yeah, 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 I think because what he declared is less than half Correct. of the race, so it's just a call. So a bit of confusion. This is really interesting because Shilko has the knowledge that Menzel had meant to raise this hand and now has Ace-8 in a spot where I think if Menzel just limped and there wasn't that confusion or, you know, something else happened... Shoko would have easily just shoved, right? But now you're like, okay, I know my opponent has a hand that he had intended to raise with. Yeah, so if he does range. have the value part of that range, how good is my ace eight gonna be doing against that? And if I shove, okay. will it even get through now? So definitely might have put a wrench in whatever plan Shoko could have had upon first seeing the ace eight. Oh, yes. Guys, yeah, no oh. drinks for you anymore. <laughs> I, I fucked it up. You fucked it up. Too, so. now we, uh, Hands not over yet, guys. What is he getting drunk through? Osmosis? Menzel's telling his rail to stop drinking. They thought he'd won the pot. Actually, Shilko's got to see a free flop because of that bizarre misclick pre. So King 9-7, Menzel has top pair. Chris Crop on YouTube says, kind of angly, looked sincere though. It was a genuine mistake. Yeah, that pre-flop confusion made Shilko just check back his option pre-flop with an ace-8 and got out flopped by Menzel's king six. Still checked around to the turn though. A bet of 800,000 from Menzel. And Shilko folds. Now you can cheer, guys. Now you can celebrate. <laughs> I came all the way from Taiwan for this. Win it already. I would be like, stop yelling at me, guys. <laughs> Again, I just think some of the things we've seen that may seem out of character for certain players or, you know, maybe timid play or whatever it may be is just a testament to how big of a spot this final table is for these players. You know, we've been yeah. on this level for over 20 minutes, yet Menzel was still a little bit confused as to what the blinds were. 
And, you know, we've seen other things throughout play today that really just continue to drive home this fact that this is a life-changing opportunity for all of these players. And that could make any person rattled. I'm certainly rattled. Shilko calling in the small blind. Pedro Marques in the big blind. Pocket nines. Raises to 1.3 million. And Shilko faults. Yetta on YouTube says, I'm ashamed of my German fellows. Don't be. It's not even the top 10 <laughs> most embarrassing rail moments. It's not even the top 100, I'd say. My first ever EPT I attended as a part of this team had some rail members that were so crazy and obnoxious that I made sure security escorted the winner out of the room. <laughs> Turns out one of them was all Shemian. And let's not forget the German rail when Andre Latau won in Barcelona, a rail that included a very drunken sevens guy who failed on two consecutive occasions to explain the whole sevens thing. <laughs> Cash with aces in the small. Who's in the big? Philippe, the chip leader? Yeah. yeah can, can we just limp in here and hope that the chip leader raises you and underrep your aces? Can we get tricky here for can once? You yeah, you can definitely get tricky. Markesh. Ooh. <laughs> Markesh electing to open, though. And Pizari actually finds a really strong hand of his own in the big blind. Just calls. This is fine. This is a, a different type of chip leader than Nacho was. Okay, so Ace is still ahead. Pizari with a gut shot. of one million and a quick call. Nine on the turn. Certainly this texture is getting less fun for aces. But when you imagine that your opponent, who's the chip leader in the big blind, is gonna be calling your raise in position with somewhat of a wide range, then you're not necessarily thinking you're beat. You just want to perhaps play this hand more cautiously now with that particular turn card. Markesh turning his hand into a bluff catcher. Backdoor flush gets there. Think you're good. And a quick check, check. Aces are good. I, I'm, I'm glad I saw a check there. I was like, man, there's so much out there to be scared about now. That is Pedro Marcus's wife, Sarah. Chino Reem also on the rail. Chino, the PCA main event champion from 2019. And made a deep run this year, too. Or at the very least, it seemed like he was going to make a deep run. Shilko in the cutoff with King Queen raises to 800,000.
Alexander Shilko has been a poker pro for six years, started playing cash games, then moved on to tournaments, has had some success in Rosvedov, winning a Eureka High Roller for 75k. Now he's facing an all-in from Nacho Barbero, has a dominating hand, ace-queen. This feels like a think and a fold. Yeah, because 65. even though Shilko has Barbero covered, it's really not by much. He would be an extreme short stack if he calls and loses here. It's just about if you think you're potentially ahead, how well you're performing against the range that Barbero is going to be willing to shove from the big blind. Do you perhaps have any of that range dominated? Because if you don't, you probably don't want to take a flip in this spot. Good fight, good fight. <laughs> Nacho, no longer the shortest stack. What? Has close oh, to 20 oh, big blinds. Like Alexander Shilko down to 15 big blinds. Yeah, I have it. It's been <laughs> if you fold it, how you crash? Is Nacho going to somehow work his way up again and reclaim the chip lead? <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. Probably. Here comes Alexander Shilko, opening under the gun with Ace King of Strawberries. Now this is a hand he will certainly go win. Oh, my Sh life can never be easy. <laughs> I'm not really sure we're going to get a ton of sympathy for Nacho. Violins in chat. As Menzel decides what to do with Jack Four in the big. I'm sure somebody watching this stream on their lunch break from their minimum wage factory job is really going to identify with Nacho's life not being easy. Yeah, and they're not getting hugged by good-looking Dutch guys. <laughs> well, it is a King-10-6 flop. Top, top for Shilko. Yeah, not much for Menzel. And given stack deaths, obviously, it's a little harder to realize backdoor equity. Continuation bet from Shilko of 600,000 and a fold from Max Menzel. Well, let's hear from Alexander Shilko because we spoke to the Belarusian player before he took his seat at the final table today. I'm not sure that I'm awake. Because everything is happening so quick, you can't really realize anything. So yeah, and uh, as about a uh, million or whatever, I didn't watch to pay out all the tournaments. And uh, only yesterday when I started to discuss with my friends some ICM stuff and some simulations, they said, okay, you're guaranteed one million. I'm like, what? So yeah, um, I'm quite satisfied already with the result, but I'm coming to the winner for sure. That's incredible. Dude isn't sure he's not dreaming. Fantastic. Wasn't paying attention to the payouts, and then someone said, oh, you're now going to get a million. What? I, I make it a point never to look at the payouts until after I've been eliminated. <laughs> I then realized that you've cashed, oh, that you actually not made the money. No, yet. that it, yeah. it, didn't, it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. Anyway. I hope when you're in the money states that you are looking at payouts and being aware of pay jumps and things that maybe somebody who might be an investor in your action would want you to be paying attention to. We already That's know that. that I made a, a, a big ICM error last time I played, but yet somehow didn't have to pay for it, so. That show has opened in the cutoff with Jack Nine of Clubs, and Max Menzel has got King Deuce of Clubs on the button. Yeah, the shorter stacks. 
looking to find good spots to chip up. How much are you playing, Masa? Eight million. Eight million. Okay. Hello, Queen. Dawson asking, any Platinum Pass holders left? And if not, what place was the last one eliminated? We had two Platinum Pass winners at the start of the day. One was eliminated in sixth place. That was Nicholas Tum. We still have a Platinum Pass winner at the table, Max Menzel, who's playing around 20 big blinds right now. As Shilko shoves and gets a fold. Nacho got involved in a huge pot against Philippe Pizarre. A6 versus Ace-10. Nacho flopped two pair, aces and six. Top pair for Pizarre, who then turned a 10 to make a better two pair. All the chips went in. Nacho did not improve. That's how Pizarre became chip leader. That's how Barbero became the short stack. Natch. Well, we haven't really seen that many hands pass since that happened, but I would like to see that now Pizarre, who has doubled into the chip lead, make a few more aggressive plays, whether it's just as simple as opening light, um, just leveraging that chip lead. Oh. Or just waking up with ace king and, uh, you know, having your <laughs> opponent dominated. That I would always work. prefer to have it. So there is the shove from Pizarri, and it's all into call for Shilko. He opened on the button to 800,000, and now it's going to cost him everything else he has to make this call. Time bank cards have been pushed out. He's clearly going to take his time over this one. I mean, maybe Shoko can figure this out. Um, just like Maria said, Pizarri hasn't really been doing what chip leaders do. We would call it out of line if they didn't have the chips. We call it bossing it when they do. And Pizarri has not been bossing it, has not been applying that pressure. So maybe Shoko can figure out he's crushed here. So reminder that the shot clock runs on every single decision. You get a standard 30 seconds. If you need more time, you have to play those time bank cards, which buy you 30 seconds per card. He's used one already. You saw Shilko looking over at Menzel's stack, at Barbro's stack, at the shorter stacks all around him. You know, really only separated by one or two big blinds. And this is a different decision for Shilko than in that situation where he opened and Barbero shoved on him because, you know, Barbero needs to be tighter because, A, it was for Barbero's tournament life. And in this spot, when the chip leader is doing it to you, you can't help but wonder if they really have the goods. And I guess a lot of the time when they don't have the goods, it's going to be an ace you're dominating, right? Those ace yeah. four, ace five suited combinations. Certainly worse ace X's would put you to the test for about a 20 big blind stack. Hey, 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 hey. Nacho trying to calm down the crowd, pointing out that Shilko's got a big decision here. Can you discount some of the suited combos because you have no, it doesn't make sense, does it? Never no, mind. your opponent's going to be shoving the offsuit combos, okay. the suited combos of the worst ace X's that we're discussing that ace 10 is going to have dominated. Um, I, he's running out of time bank cards. He's going to have to make a decision soon. I understand the thought that Isn't Shilko is putting this behind yeah. this decision. It's incredibly important. Okay. He's made the call. He calls all in. He is at risk and he is behind. And he is disgusted. Domination situation. I guess it's time to use my one time. One time invoked. Make a note, he can never use it again in any other poker game he plays anywhere in the world. If he the gets flop it. is King Jack 4. Okay. So top, top for Pizarri, but Shilko does have a gut shot straight draw. A queen would give him Broadway. 
turn card. Here's an ace. Four outs for Alexander Shilko. Ten percent chance of survival. He yes, spikes the queen God. on the river, makes the straight, doubles up. That is the one time. Wow. And just like that, Alexander Shilko takes the chip lead. <laughs> Unbelievable. Broad way. Time bank cards, well spent. One time, well spent. Shilko apologizing for the emotion, but you love to see it. This is what it means to these guys. Don't be sorry, it's part of the game. I gotta see that again. Queen on the river, makes the straight, celebrates with his rail, doubles up to over 19 million. Alexander Shilko, chip leader with just shy of 50 big blinds. Saved. I'm running great. I could not even imagine what is going on in his mind right now. I'm the big line. <laughs> Shilko now on top. Marquesh playing 36 bigs. Pizari down to 33 bigs. Menzel 19. Nacho Barbero still the shortest stack with 15 bigs. 20 minutes to go on the clock. And then we roll into the 250,000, 500,000 blind level. And that's when this is going to become even more ridiculously shallow, Maria. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty incredible that, you know, after so many days of play, that the winner could potentially be decided in a flurry of flips, essentially, because, yeah, as you mentioned, the shorter and the shallower they get, the more variance is going to be in the mix in terms of having to just pick spots where you're going to be flipping, you're going to, you know, put it in when you can, and there's no such thing as a lot of post-flop play at a certain point if it keeps going at this rate. Uh, just want to quickly address Puckle's question on Twitch. Can someone explain how he could have 10% there? Uh, four queens in the deck. Each card worth roughly 2.5%. Four times 2.5%, 10%. Two and a bit. Two and a bit. Yeah, I mean, we're rounding up. We don't do fractions when it comes to percentages. Um... We should also highlight, as it gets shallower, and as we have a couple of players with sub-20 big blind stacks, the money jumps are huge. 300K separates fifth and fourth. I just have a question, James. Had the one time not come in, does it still burn it? Oh, yeah. If you yeah. use your one time and it, it doesn't come through, tough. What? Yeah, that's the way I always understood it. The poker gods are fickle creatures. So sometimes why have they I been listen, sometimes they don't. Why have I been saving mine? <laughs> you save it for a big spot. It works more times than it doesn't, but it's not guaranteed. Oh. You need to read section 28, paragraph 3.5 of the PokerStars Live T's and C's. <laughs> Markesh betting middle pair and a gut shot straight draw, but Menzel with the open ender. Wow, goes for a small check raise. Now with Markesh's exact holding, that is not going to work. It will not get through, but kind of surprising to see Menzel take this hand as a check raise. I think a lot of the times you want to check call, try to realize your equity, because if you get shoved on here, you wouldn't want to call it off with this open ender with the flush draw possible as well. 
out there. So luckily for Gulp. him, <laughs> luckily for him, Marquesh has a hand he can only call with there and Menzel does in fact make the straight on the turn. Menzel jams with the straight, gets a fold from Marquesh. Max Menzel playing 25 picks now. Uh, no more drinks for you. Uh, despite Max's attempts to cut them off, I've got a feeling his rail is still very much drinking. I think even if they stopped drinking, they'd very much keep screaming. Plus, there's tricks to get around drinking. Maria knows. <laughs> Soak a cotton swab and some vodka. <laughs> oh, you sick puppy. You said hey, no one? more drinking. For the cars? What is wrong with you? How much, man? 12.50. 12 12 Thank you. Bizarre has opened in the cutoff with King-10. Shilko with a monster. Queen's in the big blind. Another shilko Pizarri matchup. Re-raises to three million. Probably not going to go beyond this. Uh, bye bye. And Shilko extends his chip lead at the final table. Has 20 million now. 50 big blinds. Blinds going up in 15. I would guess that Shilko's heart rate is still at least at 135 or above. That's going to take a while to come down from. It's at rave levels of BPM still. Kings for Pizarri. Opens under the gun. Some really big hands getting passed around the table. And it's round two. Pedro Marques in the big blind with pocket fives. Incredibly similar stacks. Makes the call. And these two will go heads up to the flop. Queen, 10, 8. King still good. Action check to Pizarri, who not continues. A yeah, not a board you're in love with, I don't think, with two kings, no club. And fives fold. I think it's really important to note just the composure of somebody like Marquesh so far at this final table. Someone with a lot of experience in tournaments, somebody who's played for a lot of money and not that this amount of money is not going to be nerve wracking for even somebody with that type of experience under their belt. But Marquesh is just somebody that every single other player at this table should watch out for. If he gets his hands on some more chips, it's going to make it very, very tough. Six one eight, right? Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Nacho has raised under the gun with Queen Jack. Shilko's got Ace three suited on the button. Decides to fold. Marquesh not going to play fours in the small blind. And looks like Pizarri has folded the big blind. Next hand. Yeah. Next hand. Next. 
it's nice for Barbera to find some of these opens off of the 15 big blind stack and have them get through. Every little bit helps. Ettore asks, how do you even get a platinum pass? I think you'll be able to pick them up off the floor in a couple of hours. Yes, Connor, this is not the PT fisherman. This is not the part-time fisherman, different Markish. Apparently Pedro Markish does not get on well with boats. He's a zero-time fisherman. Button race. Hmm. Ace Queen for Nacho. Another very nice hand for Nacho to wake up with in the big blind. And Marques just does not have a good enough hand to call with <laughs> once Barbaro moves the chip in, Morning. chips in. All in and a fold. Oh, wow. 25, two players with 25 big blinds. Nacho with 22 big blinds. And Pizarri not that far ahead of him with 32. Very bunched up right now. Getting really shallow. And again, blinds will increase in just over 10 minutes' time. <clears throat> 300,000 dollars pay jump separating fifth and fourth place all of the pay jumps are now ridiculously big none bigger than the difference between second and first 2.5 million for the runner-up 4 million for the winner and we said at the start of the day maria that in the first pspc we did not have a deal at the final table. They played for the advertised payouts. It'll be interesting to see whether these guys look at chopping it up or whether they go for glory. Well, I think I heard in Menzel's interview that he's in it for the glory. So oh, that, that's 100%. one person that will say no deal. I don't think you need more coffee, Shilko. You, you have enough adrenaline coursing through those veins right now to last for at least a week after this tournament's over. We'll be wide awake. Bakes says it goes so quickly. Would that make a deal less likely? Uh, I think the fact that the blinds are catching up with these guys and the stacks are quite shallow, that will increase the variance. And ironically, that makes a deal more likely. If they were deeper stacked, then the, some players may feel they have more of an advantage. I definitely agree with that. I think, you know, amongst oh, this nice. group of players specifically, I'm sure a few of them think that they have a greater skill edge than some of their opponents. But as you mentioned, James, when it's a very high variance spot for these massive pay jumps, nobody wants to be flipping for a million dollars plus. I mean, mm -hmm. if you do, then I have to ask, how rich? Okay, well, Pizarri opened with ace-10, got three bet by Shilko with ace-3. Pizarri is called. We're going to the flop. 6.6 .6 million in the pot already. And <sighs> it's domination rotation as Shilko pairs his three. Yeah, and... With the best hand, but also pretty nice board for the pre-flop three better to rep anyways. Just an extremely dry texture, king high. And Shilko continues here for 1.5 million. Pizarri calls. So now we've got 9.6 million in the middle. Pizarri with less than pot behind. The eight on the turn changes nothing. Pizarri just 5% equity. An interesting comment from don't fold to three bet. Nice to see the different approaches. Shilko definitely applying a lot more pressure with Chip Lee than Pizarri did. I mean, obviously it helps when you 
flop the best hand. But when does that ever happen? Check, check. Hazari does not improve on the river. Yeah, Pizarri feeling like ace high was perhaps enough for showdown value on the turn and not trying to turn that ace high into a bluff now ends up with the worst hand on the river, getting check to from Shilko. <laughs> Got him again. And Alexander Shilko will extend his chip nice lead. Time. He's got 25 and a half million. The second biggest stack at the table is 10 million. He's got better than a two to one advantage right now. 63 big blinds. Everyone else bunched together. All around the 20 big blind mark. Markesh, Menzel, Barbero and Pizarri. Pretty much nothing separating them right now. So, Maria, we can see, right? We can see 63 big blinds for Shilko, 23 and below for everyone else. How hard is that to spot at the table when you're that person? You're like, oh, wait, I actually kind of have everyone else in jail right now. I don't think it's that hard if you just have a little final table experience, if you've studied, you know, different types of stack depths and also, you know, this particular grouping in terms of how bunched up everybody else is, is something that you can make very effective for the chip leader in terms of, like you said, handcuffing them, putting them in jail. I mean, other than when this happens. <laughs> right, I mean, other than the short stacks picking up monster hands, but. But Shilko should just be sort of pushing everyone around at this point, right? Yeah, and I think we will see Shilko yeah, do that in the right situations. You know, you're not really gonna always be taking any two, perhaps, maybe not the absolute bottom of your range, but having nice blockers, having suited combos, you know, those are all hands that you should be getting aggressive with pre. Well, we'll see. Here comes Shilko. Folded to the chip leader. How light will it be? Not super light. Raises the button with Jack 10, makes it 800K. There's one. Well, we had that comment on Twitch earlier and a few other players observing that Shilko seems more likely to utilize that big stack and leverage it against the rest of the field than Pizarri did when he was in the same situation. Max Menzel, the platinum pass winner, is first to act here. He folds and here comes Shilko, 800,000, King 10 in the cutoff. Here's two. So far, not anything unreasonable, though, in terms of holdings. I'm sure he would be opening a lot wider than these Broadway cards that he's been getting dealt the last two hands. But these ones, he doesn't even have to think about. There is the winner of the PCA main event, Michelle Dutani, who's come to rail his fellow countryman, Pedro Marques. Or maybe he also wants to borrow Sarah's phone. <laughs> We've got, I mean, both Portugal and Brazil still in the mix here. And I wonder if we'll get to the stage where Shilko will just be able to start open jamming on people. As Pizarri is going to play from the button, King Jack. Raises to 1.6 million. And Zell with ace four in the big blind. 
We have seen Menzel shove these types of spots with the ace-x combos from the big blind. So wouldn't necessarily be surprised to see him take it here. Might be a little concerned that Pizarri just opened off the stack instead of maybe jamming. Maybe feeling like that is an indication of actually more strength than weakness. But if you believe Pizarri has any raised folds here from the button, then this could still be a profitable shove. Menzel also has Pizarri covered, so it's also an important consideration when you take these spots. I think that's fine. I thought there was a shorter stack, but it turns out after folding, <laughs> Pizarre and Menzel are even now. It's all very, very even. Menzel through Marquesh. And... They are going to be shallower in one minute's time. Blind's about to go up at the PSPC final table. After the PSPC is over, James, can I take your widget home? Mm -hmm. I don't let anyone else touch my widget. What are you going to do with it, Maria? <laughs> it's kind of... I'm going to give your widget a nice life, James. I'm going to cook for your widget. I'm going to clean. It's not the kind of thing you can give to someone else. It's your, you know... It's covered in him. <laughs> Menzel calls out of the small blind. Shilko in the big blind. Wants to see how many chips Menzel has. Thank you so much. It's easy to be polite when you're the chip leader. He seems to have been a polite young man for the entire tournament. Oh, sure. <laughs> How nice was he before he drilled that Broadway gut shot? Still pretty nice. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I think that has taken us to the new blind level. We are now at level 34. The blinds are 250,000, 500,000 with a 500k big blind ante. That means the chip leader has 55 big blinds. Everyone else is at 17, 16, or 15. Ugh. The reason, Maria, why I can't let you have my widget when we're done here is I need it, because we're going to Paris at the end of the month. We're going to be covering the main event from EPT Paris, February 20th to the 26th, five, five days, rather, of live Cards Up coverage from the first EPT of 2023. Make sure you join us on the Pokestars Twitch and YouTube channels. A new destination on the European Poker Tour, Joe. Lay Widget, I believe, as it's called, in France. It takes the feminine. It's La Widget. Yeah, I was going to say, why do you just assume that it's masculine? Lay, lay is masculine? It's like La. But yeah, like L E le? versus L A. It's La. Trust me, I took I thought, French in high school. I thought school. the masculine was L. Mm. L widget, lay widget. And you have French heritage? <laughs> I am a second generation French American. So here we go, first hand of level 34. And a raise and take it for Shilko. Not really out of line, blind on blind. Raising five deuce under the gun. That's what we're looking for. But something's gonna have to soon. Something's gotta give. Uh, if it doesn't though, Stapes, I think Shilka will find himself in a very nice spot. If he just continues to chip away and all of these shorter stacks continue to lose a couple big blinds per orbit. 
to the ante. The blinds coming around over and over again. Before you know it, down to sub 10 big blind stacks for a few of these players. And that is when Shilko will just probably steamroll with some all-ins, forcing players to have to call off when they're going to be waiting each other out for the pay jump. Barbero versus Pizarre. Nacho v. Pizza. Round three. And Pizarre out flops Nacho. Domination, rotation. Barbero with the open ender now. Pizarre trying to get to showdown cheaply. Nacho trying to realize that equity doesn't come in. Nacho's frustration starting to become visible. I would imagine that when you've run hot the entire time and then start running, I don't know, normal, it feels like something's been taken away from you. Right. I, I, I can understand Nacho's frustration. Also because, of course, there is some expectation that builds within you, even if you know not to have it when you come into the final table as the chip leader. You're not exactly counting out first place prize money, you know, in your head, but you do have a slight idea of how you think it's supposed to play out or how it might shake out for you. And, you know, so far it's been a bit of a roller coaster for Nacho. Claro, yeah. Nacho started up, then he went down, then he was up, and right now he is down. Menzel under the gun with Quing. A red one and a red one. <laughs> Sorry in the small, 7-5 of diamonds. Anna. Nacho in the big blind, also with Quing. And these two stacks are just about even. Nacho shoves. Menzel asking for a count. Just push your stacks up next to each other. Yeah, and it's incredibly tough when, again, we talk about these short stacks being so, so nice. bunched up. <laughs> and you calling off will basically put you no. down to one, two big blinds. You can't afford to lose. You can't afford to be wrong in terms of the hands that you're going to put your opponent on. You know, you have to be very well versed in what your calling ranges should be, but they've got to be super tight in these situations where folding can actually make you money. So even if you know, hey, maybe this is a spot where for chips I would be making this call, you know that that rule is not going to apply in this situation when you can essentially fold your way into more money. This feels right on the line, Maria. Like you don't really expect Nacho shoving too many hands that you have crushed here. Lots of hands that you're slightly behind to. And a few that are crushing you. Yeah, I think Menzel is going to fold. That oh. was a call. Wow. And right when I said that, he makes the call. And now, of course, we know this is very likely to end in a chop. King Queen, but... Menzel has diamonds and hearts. Barbero only clubs. You see Barbero saying it's 100% a fold from Menzel. He's shocked to see him call with this hand. I certainly can't imagine a worse hand calling. I think it's a King Jack feels like a slam dunk fold. Yeah, I Either way, you know, it's most likely going to end in a chop pot, but Barbera was hoping he could chip up a little bit with a fold from Menzel. It's huge just to pick up the blinds at this point. Jack, eight, six, one club, one spade, one diamond. This hand will end in a chop, and you know what they say, everyone, everyone loves the chop pot. Early reviews are in. 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Come on, Mark. 
We're out doing Toy Story 4. We're beating Get Out. Always against. Ah, yeah, this is kind of. This is kind of. That's well, kind of a superstar rail for Barbero. I think that in this situation, when you realize that perhaps your opponent either doesn't have the understanding of. No, I, that one was worse. <laughs> this one was almost. The Free lessons, isn't it great? That's what I was saying. It's like, if you think your opponent either doesn't understand what hands they should be calling with, no. with ICM considerations, or maybe that they just don't care, you, you should just be letting that go and just making the adjustments internally, right? Then you kind of know what you need to do as an appropriate response to the fact that they're not following, let's say, the playbook at a final table that most players would adhere to, and that's okay. I just like the fact that I wouldn't know it's a terrible call. So I'd be like, oh, I have king-queen, you have king-queen. That's, that's pretty great. Ace four suited for Markish. First time chat from M. Bruce. This is not a good response from Nacho, but 100% should be a cold. Man, you waited all that time for your first chat. You wrote cold instead of fault. Awkward. Pair of fours for Markish. Top pair for Pizari. And Markish will be continuing and won't be getting the fold he's hoping for. Excellent bag, it says, not my first chat, but it is quite call around here, around three degrees. Well done. Oh, sorry, that wasn't uh, not just not a fold, that was a raise. Yeah, I think Pizarre now just wants to protect his hand from two overs, deny equity. And he is able to get a fold out of Markesh. And that is going to leave Markesh around 12 big blinds. Pizarre second on the leaderboard, but that's the good news. The bad news is that is only 24 big blinds. It is interesting to see that Pizarri did even just call preflop with the King-10 against Marquesh's open. These players certainly finding spots and opportunities to see three despite their shallower stack depth. Ace King suited, big slick for Menzel. The chip leader in the big blind. 14 bigs for Menzel to start the hand. I'd love to see a limp here, I think. I. Are you nuts? I just feel like 14 bigs, it's the perfect stack size to just limp shove. I think your opponent Especially what we've seen out of Shilko, you know. You limp, your has. opponent checks six deuce and flops a six. Team and then. Team. First of all, you're being results oriented because Shilko had six deuce. All right, we're high. gonna change the subject. <laughs> Marie and I are fighting. Let's find out a little bit more about Max Menzel. I played a lot during the golden time, so gold rush, right? Uh, everybody was playing poker, and I, I, I made some money on the side during the uh, during the studies. But I also decided against making it my profession. But the love and the passion for poker always stayed. 
um, flying under the radar and people seeing me as a Martina Pass winner. But I always felt that I know what they're doing. Um, so it gave me a lot of confidence. To be very honest, I'm uh, not so much because of the money in poker. I'm, I really uh, like to play for the win. And, and since it's a hobby, it didn't get into my skin the entire tournament. I didn't look at pay jumps. I am pretty relaxed at the table here. So I, I really want to go for the trophy and that's why I'm here. Big Stallion asks, any free rollers still in? Yeah, that was one of them. Max Benzel, the lone platinum pass holder, still in this event. We're going heads up to this flop. Two nice hands here. Pizarri under the gun. Markesh, King Jack with in the big blind and spikes the Jack on the turn. Marcus is going to take this opportunity to bet after being checked to. Oh, nope, it's leading. Excuse me. Yeah, about half pot on the turn and gets called by the two overs and the gut shot. Nine, ten. No, hold on. Nine, ten, jack, queen. Nope. Pair of jacks good. Marcus, 3.5 million back, 5.3 million in the middle. to show down. Check, check. Pair of jacks, good. And Markish climbing out of that bottom spot. Up to 17 bigs now. Barbero back to being the shortest with 14. We had two platinum pass holders still in this event to start the day. We did lose Nicholas Toom first off. This chip distribution already pretty fun for the chip leader. But what would make it even more fun is when one short stack really starts distancing themselves from the others and gets down to danger zone territory because then ICM pressure is going to be so great. It's really hard not just to hand it over to the chip leader at that point. Uh, so Menzo, eight. Oh, I thought we were done with this hand. Ace deuce for Pizarri in the big blind. Pretty fun flop for Shilko, a club, a straight draw, two overs. Losing to Ace High at the moment. Yeah, and Ace Two Suited is a combination that, you know, Pizarri could have considered jamming with from the big blind against the chip leader open. You're going to expect a lot of wide opens. Granted, this hand, of course, King Jack suited very nice and is not considered light by any means, but still, you're going to expect a lot of hands to open coming from the chip leader on the button. And so here we see. Pizarri still able to find the ace on the turn, which is going to make this hand a little bit easier for him to proceed. Shulko can get a free card. Will need to hit the straight to win this at showdown. Shulko going for a delayed C bet. Not only does he have a lot of equity with the straight draw, but also the turned ace is a good card for his perceived range. And a lot of times you do expect your opponent from the big blind to shove their ace X's. And because of that, probably not gonna give Pizarri too much credit for connecting with top pair. 
I'm holding. Lazari shoves. And that's gonna shut it down. Shut it down, Mike, shut it down, back it up, shut it down. Yeah, really nice for him to be able to deny the straight draw equity from Shilko there. Let's take a look at the chip stacks. As noted, Nacho Barbero in the basement, 12 bigs now. 16 for Menzel, 17 for Marcus, 26 for Pizarri. Shilko with a luxurious 50 big blinds. Galen asks, question for the commentary. Does Shilko live in Minsk or actually somewhere else? I believe Shilko is from Minsk. I don't have him listed as living anywhere else, so maybe he's still in Minsk. How would I describe the zone that Nacho currently finds himself in? Not The not super comfortable zone. Yeah, if we're talking about his chip stack, if we're talking about his mood, I would say... Uh, Salt zone? <laughs> the sour zone? The B-ration zone? Gart wants to know, important question, did Maria stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night? Because she knows a lot about poker. I think Maria books a room at the Holiday Inn Express to keep her shoes at and then stays at the nice hotel for herself. I can't, uh, <laughs> when's the last time you would have stayed at a Holiday Inn Express or similar? It, I'll be honest, it's been a while, but I'm just confused as to what the Holiday Inn Express has to do with Poker knowledge. There is a, is this uh, a reference that I'm missing. There's a commercial campaign about smart people staying oh. at the Holiday Inn Express. Okay, well, so I would be like that frame of reference. Like Sorry. a lawyer expert, and they go, "Are you a lawyer?" And they're like, "No, I just stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night." Do we think these commercials are funny? Is it a good marketing yeah. campaign for them? I've seen worse. I've definitely seen worse. I mean, I wouldn't know if it's a good advertisement or not. I can't afford a Holiday Inn Express. Premier in for me. <laughs> that or Motel 6, but it turns out it doesn't cost $6 to stay there anymore, which is annoying. Ace four off for Pizarri. Folds in the cutoff. I stayed at Motel 6 before when I was 18 or 19, grinding poker in the middle of nowhere, and I was too tired to drive home after like, a long session. Like Elsinore or something? Yeah, somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Matthias says it's time to loose some players. Folds around to Max Menzel. This is literally the most Menzel you can have. Papo and C on the rail. Alejandro Lococo, Team Pro member. Argentinian crusher, more than likely here to hang for Nacho. Love to write asks, how is the campaign going to get Hardigan in the Irish Open? There's a, there's a couple of people here. By the way, when I say I want to get Hardigan in the Irish Open, I, I think that he should be put into the Irish Open the way that many of our team pros 
get free rolled from time to time. So there's one person who controls the purse strings that I gotta butter up a little bit. And hopefully, I guess there's more than one person. Hopefully one of them is listening. <laughs> you know who you are and you know what is being asked of you. I've been to the Irish Open once and it was so much fun. Every stereotype you think of Irish players and drinking, I can confirm are true. I love corned beef and cabbage. Actions folded around to Markish in the small blind. Third in chips, but that is 14 big blinds, my babies. Not a lot. Yeah, despite Markesh picking up a few big hands earlier, just really have not been able to gain much traction. Okie dokie. And Pizarri jamming on Markesh. And they're just really jockeying position right now for those bottom three stacks. Barbero down to 10 big blinds. And there is Christoph Volkenhorst in the crowd, one of the original Platinum Five. None of them went super deep, but they did have some fun. Clement went the deepest of the Platinum Five. And Clement and Christoph both cashed in the event. And that video right there really says a lot about what this trip was like for a lot of people. Markish. Raising with ace king from the button. Ace six suited from the small blind is a hand that you would re raise sometimes. Pizarri jams and Markish is going to call. Yeah, and <laughs> Pizarri in a bad spot right now. Can't necessarily blame him. Pizarri in the oven. Domination situation. Yeah, really hoping that Markish had a raise fold hand, but of course, Markish was never going to let Big Slick go. Wow. Markesh, any consolation, we can make the bad two flush draws joke. Flop is deuce, five deuce. Okay, some opportunities to chop now, otherwise known as chop opportunities. Ace on the turn, so aces and deuces now for each player. 7% chance of chop. Bizarre needs to spike a six to knock out Markesh. River card. Oh my is God! Is a six. Heartbreak. What a heartbreaking river card. Oh, wow. Domination rotation. Oh, my goodness. Excuse me, um, I need a barf bag. Maria Ho disgusted. Pedro Marquez shell-shocked. Out in fifth place for $1.2 million. And Pizarri... Running hot the right the now. Sorry? You need four three outers for all the chips. Wow, man. Four three outers for all the chips. Nacho is keeping three. score. Somebody has been paying attention. Oh. I think there's just a melted cheese rivalry between Nacho and pizza. Pizarri up to 43 big blinds now. 
And everyone else ladders up $300,000 from that suck out. And this is becoming a two horse race, Pizarri and Shilko. Pizarri with 43 big blinds, Shilko with 56. And Menzel and Barbero with 12 and nine respectively. Pizarri also having position on Shilko is nice. You would expect that these two chip leaders are going to cooperate a little bit in the understanding that with the other two stacks so much shorter that Shoko and Pizarri, it's in their mutual best interest to not play huge pots against each other anyways. Menzel moving all in against Pizarri's open from the button. <laughs> Asex is going to get through. Oh, 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 oh. Menzel putting That's a little distance between himself and Barbero. Nacho is going to need to pick up a hand in the next 30 minutes before the blinds go up what? again. He's got nine big blinds, which typically can last a while, but when you're four handed. <laughs> They come around pretty, pretty quickly. Next payout is $1.5 million, but the next ladder is for about $350,000. Can you imagine just knowing all you have to do is outlast someone with nine big blinds and you make $350,000? That is almost as much as Maria Ho makes in a month. <laughs> That's why when people are out there watching, being like, oh, I can't believe they're folding this hand, I would call all day. It's like, no, you wouldn't, because $350,000 is so much money, and all you have to do is just stay out of trouble. Think about how hard you have to work at home for your $65,000 or your $30,000 or your, even your hundred and ten. Think about how hard you have to work. Here you have to do nothing and you make 350,000, like yeah. literally just fold. Yeah, you just Man, have to sit there and just pretend to look at your cards. You don't even actually really have don't to even look. <laughs> so the nations left here, by the way, are Brazil, Argentina, Germany, and Belarus. Real international affair here with four left. Not surprising because an event of this magnitude obviously going to bring out all players from every corner of the world. Wow, we pocket threes versus pocket three is gonna be tough for anyone to hit a set here. To me, this is how real poker should be played. You both get dealt the same hand and whoever wins, wins. Oh, Shilko oh bluffs this one, see? It's disgusting, bro. <laughs> no, I mean, small pot, but it's funny, you know? Yeah, 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 of course, of course, I'm just kidding. Shilko gets a little distance from Pizarri after that hand. <laughs> Still chip leader. Menzel and Barbero in very bad shape. Pocket tens for Menzel, beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, and not so short that an open would look suspicious. You know, if you're opening off of maybe a sub 10 big blind stack, that might make your opponents a little suspicious that you have a really premium hand. But off of 16 bigs, your opponents are gonna ex 